Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. what you do to me it's what you do to mm. me that one yeah that a little bit a little bit a little bit hi everybody hi everybody i'm, I'm matt dillahunty all right tight i thought you just what it said in the intro i was just going with it jinx did it say where, what do you mean it said that in the intro it said uh, with jimmy snow and matt dillahunty and i'm not jimmy snow so i figured it, it only leaves oh, one options for me yeah, yeah yeah man as i'm because uh, i'm i'm like phasing myself out over the next year i probably have to do some kind of update for that but i, I you know i'm gonna put that you well should, off. you shouldn't you yeah. shouldn't <laughs> you let everybody or do, do you change the name but keep all of the shots of you with the long hair in there yeah. and everything just leave, well, leave that and the, the the ironic thing being that i'm gonna be doing like two shows a month where we lead into the sometime show so that's why i'll be gone uh -huh. for probably half of them but matt also tends to take one off a month so arguably yeah. we may get to a point soon where he and I are only on together. It's, it's always one of us, but it's on together mm -hmm. may only be once a month. I, that's, that's the uh, potential right. future. Speaking of actually, you know, it's funny is I for, totally forgot to, uh, cause I'm a professional, you, but you said it. So you're Matt Dillahunty. Yeah. Hey, everybody yeah, leave that there. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jimmy snow. This is, uh, I feel like there's got to be a way to fusion. Man, I'm so, all right, I'm just going to be straight up with everybody. If there was ever a day you wanted to see if you could beat me, today's the day because I am on the edge of uh, of a migraine. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go with Vat Filahunty, reversing the letters because otherwise it would have been Fat Villahunty, which fat sounds fat really mean. <laughs> that sounds so unkind. Uh, no, that's great. That should have been it. I'm the it's unkind to me because I'm definitely the big guy at the at the line. Uh, anyway, um, You're I'm joined with Vat Villa Vat Villa Hunty. Hey, it, facts are facts. It's not a thing I mind. I you know I get to enjoy lots and lots of uh, chicky nuggies, and that's a thing that I appreciate. Um, look, this is the Sunday show. We take calls about religion, spirituality, theism. Uh, and if you have a belief in the supernatural realm, if you have God belief, we would love it if you would call us and talk to us about it. And I'm a little disappointed because there was a person who was queued up to talk to us who has since dropped uh, and who I don't know if they were calling. The hard part is, is like just by the topic I wanted, I, I was already planning to roast the heck You're out of You're talking about the one from Arizona? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yo, I was going to be all over that dude. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was disappointed that that got, yeah. Sometimes it can be that a person calls with a topic like this because somebody said it to them. Uh, oh, okay. It looks like they might be re-queuing. We might hey. get to talk to them here in a moment. Uh, Hopefully we didn't scare them away. <laughs> that Phila Hunty, how are you doing, man? Tell the people. I've got a, a, a glass of eggnog and and a, a song in my heart, and I'm recording like five things today. And I'm very stressed out. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good show. <laughs> is it eggnog or is it e eggnog? It you know it's age appropriate beverages. It's 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 it's, it's a, um, a totally non alcoholic, just regular style eggnog. Okay, but you re you realize you said it's age it's an age appropriate. Uh, but you're almost 30, so that doesn't <laughs> tell us anything because it is appropriate at your age. You know to what? Drink. I like being called almost 30 because I'm 31, which oh, is almost 30, but I, it makes me sound younger. <laughs> dude, I, I legit thought you were 28 all this time. <laughs> <laughs> We've been friends for years. 
Thank goodness, you look like shit for 28. But 31, I've been, I've you look been 28 good. the whole time. <laughs> well, that's that's actually probably what happened is we, you probably were 28 when we met, and I didn't bother to update it in my head, even though we've probably hung out on one of your birthdays by now. I don't know, or done something to. I don't, I've probably I don't at least told you happy birthday. What, where, what, I don't where, really announce my birthday. I just, I, I'm just here. You know what I mean? <laughs> was it not your birthday when you were flying through Louisiana? What was the, what was that? Wasn't that what was going on? That was for Dave's party. That would have been in February. So no. Okay. Well, uh, no. anyway, 720-619-2288 or the web link in the description. If you or, want or whatever. to <laughs> talk to <laughs> us, to, honestly, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry if everybody's hearing all the sounds my fucking thing is making. I'm not a professional. I am, <laughs> I am fine with if today ends up being like a 90 minute show we're, we're look i've said that before we've started shows like that before and then the show gets going and i'm like no i'm feeling great i'm ready for more i haven't even looked at the call list in a minute because i was getting my camera set up so i could try and match this our head sizes to each other because I, mm -hmm. I like that proportionality oh, however let me help you let me, let me let me get in on that action here well i've there we go I've i'll it. move my thing okay no, well, say, I'm, I'm gonna do it better oh wow well, is that is, good this is this is making me feel claustrophobic. <laughs> uh, and look for great things this week. I, I'll, I'll get announcements out of the way while more calls are queuing up. But again, we would love, love, love to talk to you if you have some sort of religious belief, if you believe in God, you have a supernatural belief, if you believe in ghosts, you have some sort of... I'd even take a UFO call today because uh, we just want to hear why. Why you do. Oh, I forgot. So, man, I... I wish it was easy to do things just for a day on YouTube, yeah. like how we have a membership thing called the Dilla Hunters, specifically for people who want to be associated with supporting Dilla Hunty stuff. Because today, they, it, if, if I could just go in and just for today change it to the Phila Hunters, that would be fun. Phila Hunters. That would be, that'd be tremendous. Uh, I had several people write to me asking me to like change my Patreon to like the Valkyries or something, like something uh, like that. And, and by, I want to do that, but for something totally different. I want to do like a, a cool ass like girls in STEM initiative to like send out like cool like science kits to schools or something. Call that like the, the <coughs> something like that. I yeah. could I couldn't do that just as a Patreon bit. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah, is a cool like, thing. It's a cool yeah. idea. You mean you a cishet white male don't want to take something that's usually for women, uh, just like and make it yours? That's well, it's very. Noble. I mean. <laughs> um, uh, uh, thank you, women. I'll take that. This week on the line, Skep Talk on Monday will be Erica. I, I always put her name in as Erica Gibbon, and I've told her that that should just be Me her too. performance name. Yeah, yeah. Erica, yeah. the Gutsick Gibbon, or Erica of Gutsick Gibbon. Is Erica on her channel, the Gutsick Gibbon, or or is it like is she, it is the does the Gutsick Gibbon refer to her? Or refer to like a mascot of the channel, or what's the? I'm ninety. I'm ninety nine percent sure that it started out as referring to her, and okay. I don't think she uses it to refer to herself anymore. But I think that was the point initially. Yeah. 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 Kind of like Seth, where everybody is like, so Seth is the thinking atheist, and he's like, we're all the thinking atheists, and I'm like, hey, it's buddy, the, you the speak for Ross. yourself. Yeah, the, yeah. I will think when I want to think. How dare you? Uh, anyway, <laughs> Erica will be joined by Jordan, a.k.a. Uh, Reason to Doubt uh, is the channel. And then Dave Warnock will be joined by Eric of Skeptics and Scoundrels this Tuesday. Wednesday, Matt Dillahunty will presumably make a friend between now and then to have on because at the moment that slot is currently open. However, there are other slots throughout the month, which are it's just the, the, the Wednesday most needed to be booked, as in this Wednesday. That's the one that's not yet booked. However, uh, if he makes an extra friend between now and then, and then Tackus this week will be Arden Hart and Luxander. And then look out because we're pretty committed to one of these weekends. We're going to be launching debates here on the line. We just got to get some, some uh, I's dotted and some T's crossed and, and, you know, do the work in the first place. Uh, it's more like get start. No, I'm kidding. We're, we're further along than just getting started. Um, Awesome. 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 All right. 
Let's start jumping in on some calls unless you have some opposition to it. It does look like DJ yeah, called back, so fine. I say let's go for it. I'm going to be very charitable and find out why DJ's calling with this topic before I presume bad faith. So we right, are talking. Right, based on the call screen, I'm not, yeah. yeah. DJ in Arizona, uh, you are on the line with Forrest and Jimmy. Hello, hello. Hi. What a hello. Deep, a deep tone. I'm very jealous. Uh, <laughs> DJ, go ahead and introduce your topic, and, and we'll give you a moment here to, to do so. Yeah, so I, um, I am on the side of abortion where, like, obviously getting abortion is wrong. It's against bodily autonomy. But when talking to a friend of mine a couple months ago, this has honestly been the, not – I'm not going to say the best argument for abortion because they're all bad, but like it's the only one that kind of, you know, like raised an eyebrow for me. So, yeah, I just I was wondering to know if birth rates ever become an issue is. Yeah, is banning abortion like is there an argument to be made for it or, you know, I don't know, because. So ju just to be clear, what you're asking is. If there ever comes a point in our history where birth rates are so exceedingly low that our population is dwindling and diminishing and we're just simply running out of new people in the next generation, should we then consider banning abortion in order to make sure that people have to have children if they get pregnant and birth rates go up? Essentially, yes. I mean, because I've been yeah, no. looking at some... Wait, wait, wait. Is, clarifying no. question. I, 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 before we jump, because I already know what our answers are going to be. Uh, yeah. DJ, your friend has a uterus or no? The one that stated this? No. Yeah. This is not my opinion. Yeah. No, no, so, no, no. I know. No. That's why I'm I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. And I'm glad I had prefaced it earlier when I saw the call come in. It was like sometimes the calls come in with a very salacious topic, but it's like, hey, someone said to me, and that ended up being what it was. Someone said this to me. I wanted to know your point on it. It checks out that your friend doesn't have a uterus. Uh, no. Because no, what no. I would have said to <laughs> not you. Not that I'm aware of. What I would have said to your friend is like, well, what we would have to do at that point when we ban abortion is first we'll put all of our medical dollars into making sure that uh, men can carry babies, that we can mm -hmm. implant uh, uh, babies into all humans, regardless of birth, sex, uh, and then ban it. And just the reason why I would start there is just to see, just to see if suddenly it's understood when it's going in uh, your friend's body uh, that no, we don't turn people into womb slaves to meet society. Look, in the past we've gone, hey, the society needs such and such. What if we have slaves to get that? And I don't know if you know the history, DJ, and it, I'm sure you do. Your friend may not. That's always been a bad idea. Uh, so womb slaves, no. I don't know. Anyway, Forrest, go ahead. I, I, no, I no, I, I would say the this. same thing is that like at the end of the day, it, the, the argument doesn't change whatsoever for me. There's not a point where I say, okay, well this and this and this are happening. Therefore bodily autonomy of 50% of the population doesn't really matter to me anymore. You know, that doesn't, it, it, that just doesn't ever track. Um, so to say, well, our population is declining. There are lots of ways to fix that. And and just saying, okay, we're going to force anybody who's pregnant to keep that pregnancy. The, yes, what else is going to come yeah, along he, with that? He, he, a he, lot he, of pregnancy-related illnesses and deaths. So you're yeah. still going to have an issue, right? You're going to have a lot of people who are born into families where they can't be taken care of properly. That family is you know, in poverty. That family has mental health issues. That family is split up and broken and they're working too much and all these – a million other reasons why somebody might not want to have a kid – or arguably shouldn't have one. I'm not going to say it shouldn't be allowed, but like reasonably shouldn't like there's, there's a million different things to suggest that some, that a child should not be born into a family or that having a child in that family would hurt that family and that child or saying that the person who is pregnant would be hurt by it or would die from it. Or like all the, all of these unnecessary extra complications, including yeah. increasing poverty and, and causing problems like unsustainable society, like, those all come along with it. So if you want to increase yeah. birth rate, lots of ways to do it that don't involve taking away someone's human rights. Yeah. And obviously there's not like a, um, I mean, I like what is it? Cop correlation is not equal causation. The, he pointed to statistics basically saying from 
1960 to like 2020, the birth rate in the United States has decreased like some 40% or something like that. Keep going. And it has decreased. And then he went, he went into a CNN article saying that like, what was it? Um, in rates where abortion was banned, birth rates has, has went up. And so I don't know if it's even that dire this, like right now, like personally, I don't know if it's that big of an issue. Like I, it's, it's not. I mean, I it's, really, just, it's really not. You yeah, know, no, it, I, we're big enough birth rates. It is, you know, but yeah, um, I don't know. It's just. Well, I would say bir- birth rates the have decreased. Birth rates, I don't think it's, it's, it, it speaks to the fact there are no good arguments for it, but I still don't think it's a great one. Um, birth rates have been decreasing, but there's a variety of factors that go into that that are all good things. Increased education, increased family, uh, like, like household income, like these are things that de- decrease birth rate. Comprehensive sex education decreases birth rates. Um, and, and the thing is, when people talk about birth rates in this way, they don't it's it's like talking about sausage you don't think about all the things that go into it that make it so horrific you know there's a way like yeah. i said there are plenty of ways to increase birth rates that are actually beneficial for society um but when we just look at a very poor population a population where especially um uh, women don't have access to education but really just low education in general but especially there um when we talk about uh, populations that teach abstinence only sex ed um hyper religious populations things like like we talk about all these things that are demonstrably societal harms yeah we see a really high birth rate in those areas and it's not good (laughs) it's not good for that the people it's not good for those babies it's not good for the society as a whole so yes we've seen a decrease in birth rate and that's a very 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 good thing yeah this the reason why this stuff's been coming up more recently is because elon musk uh, has decided to be alarmist about it. So people will stop freaking out of the fact that he gets people pregnant on the first date. Um, like mm-hmm. this dude needs to, this, this dude just thinks he needs to be replicated a million times. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, in, in the meantime, even if there is some problem in the future where we have to up our numbers, uh, it is so funny that it's always these conversations about people. Uh, uh, what, what's the phrase that, Anna really doesn't want to be referred to as birthing people without uh, about birthing people without birthing people. Uh, And it's, and it's literally this, like, why is that where so often again, not you DJ, your friend, it goes, should we force, should we have womb slaves? Essentially? Is that something we should consider when it's like, it's not a hypothetical that we're going to have to address before we have to do whatever will we, whatever radical actions will, will stop climate change. Like it's definitely coming after climate change gets solved. But then even mm-hmm. before then, it's like, why are you inventing a hypothetical just to really establish whether or not there are conditions under which you will respect women's autonomy, which, you know, historically people have not, when we're also within the generation that will invent artificial wombs. Like, we've already invented them. We just haven't applied them to humans yet. We're already mm-hmm. growing sheep and stuff in artificial wombs. Uh, uh, yeah. and then, you know, people, they've even, there was a, like a 3d conceptual thing of like, here's what a baby factory might look like in the future. You know, you, you go here, you get it in, and then they grow in that little pod thing. And then you come the day to pick it up and everybody freaked out. It's too dystopian for them. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, fucking dystopia, those perfectly healthy babies, those perfectly, yeah. perfectly won't have any significant illness. Babies will have gotten rid of all their genes for cancer and all kinds of stuff. And hopefully we won't do that's, shitty eugenics at the same time but uh right hopefully well, that's hopefully, the thing is that whenever hopefully. we talk about like whenever we talk about designer babies or, or baby factories or whatever these things we talk about genetic manipulation like that often is the conversation it's like oh it's this terrible dystopian nightmare why would um, we do this you're gonna want to choose your baby's sex and eye color and hair and athleticism and all the and it's like yeah but actually what it really would be is like no more asthma and no yeah. more pediatric cancer and no more you know, pediatric diabetes and everybody would be be born with some level of musical talent maybe it just, you know like the we, we would actually have it to where we could just eliminate common uh, uh congenital and pediatric diseases entirely and make sure everybody has a safe pregnancy and nobody has 
you know, pregnancy uh, uh, complications or dies during childbirth or, you know, and, and then, then the conversation to me becomes, why wouldn't we do that? If we have that technology, why on earth? It, it's, it's just as dystopian as saying like, oh, factory farming. Yeah. But also like foodborne illnesses goes way down. But we'll, but so like let's probably not, a good idea, right? Like, yeah. And we'll, we'll uh, no eugenics. Let's not weed out clearly inferior neurotypical genes. Uh, exactly. DJ. Yes, <laughs> DJ. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead, DJ. Yeah, I mean, it's just I don't know. It's just interesting because I don't know. He, he pointed to the fact that they started declining around 1960 or 1950, which is around the same time. Ro, I mm-hmm. believe Roe v. Wade was implemented. So I don't like I said. I don't know if it's direct. I don't, yeah, I you know, it's just it's just in the biggest, not the biggest, but the best. <clears throat> well, and, uh, another. Only I'm argument. sorry to cut you off, but like y- you're right. Roe yeah. v. Wade was around that time. I don't remember the exact dates off the top of my head. I probably should, but like also, women were allowed to get divorced pretty recently. There's another yeah. one that goes into lower birth rates because women aren't trapped at home to an abusive dude who's going to rape them. Like that's that's yeah. birth rates went down when women were allowed to decide what their own reproductive destinies were, and it turns out. Not a lot of people with uteruses are just out there dying to get pregnant all the time forever and just to be subservient to whatever dick having dude is is fucking demanding more children. Um, yeah, it, it 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 generally the low birth rate thing tends to circle around freedom, and and so does the anti you know, the the argument for you know abortion being legalized. Thank you so much for the people in the comments who are telling us that it was around 1973 uh or around the 19 yeah, people say 1973 uh for Roe v Wade. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um Yeah. Yeah, the the whole uh, uh women's liberation movement that was so scary um was was the exact same kind I'm of panic like Stewie Griffin led to the exact same <laughs> excellent results. The women's liberation movement. The women's liberation. <laughs> no, now you don't sound as much. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Your your latent impression. Your almost impression. Your accidental woman was better. Uh, DJ, I I think we're gonna wrap up here. But I guess if I if if you if you see your friend again, I would just turn the question on him as, hey, uh, friend, because we didn't get a name. Hey, friend, uh, if there was a true, deep, bad. American life threatening world threatening economic crisis. Would you consider bringing back slavery? Cause slavery, mm-hmm. man, that shit works for economies like gangbusters. Mm-hmm. It's it. Oh, you make money. Yeah. You make yeah, money. Yeah. And just asking that. And if his answer is yes, call dibs on him as a slave when it ha- when it goes down. Yeah. Just. Uh, good. That's about I all, appreciate all it. I, I think that's all I got for for, for today. Thanks you guys for taking the call. Thanks, DJ. Uh, thank Please you, can. DJ. We were so prepared to freak out on you. We thought you were going to be a jerk, but we really, I appreciate you being kind and and and, and just asking questions. I'm trying to be more Zen, but not if that's yeah. a religious word. I actually don't know what Zen really means, just that it's often referred to. I think it is a religious term, isn't it? Is that from Hinduism? I, I, I'm or pretty, Buddhism? No, I believe it's from Buddhism. But like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Well, because as far as I know of Buddhism, it's more of like a philosophical thing and then a religious mm-hmm. thing. And there's plenty of secular Buddhists out there. And like, I, I don't know much about it. So I don't want to speak too much about it. But like, I'm pretty sure. I just don't yeah. know if it's cultural appropriation to use such a term in this way. I don't know. I don't know. But I get what you're saying. Like I'm not saying. exploiting it. Also, um, I, I hate terms like that. No. I, I'm not going to go on a rant because I'll start to sound like a fucking red pillar. But I'm like, <laughs> the phrase cultural appropriation, we need to talk about exploitation. Because we appropriate mm-hmm. culture every goddamn day. It's impossible to miss. Good, yeah. It's impossible to not do. But it's exploitation. I'm going to keep making foods that are delicious. I'm not going to only appropriate my own culinary culture. I'm British. Right. You have to put <laughs> vinegar on everything. Everything. <laughs> Conquer the world for spices and use none of them. This is my. I'm East European. If I have only used my own culture, I would just drink sour cream. Right, right, right. <laughs> I also want to just shout out to uh, uh, Philip in the chat who says, uh, "Are we unironically saying people with uteruses? How far has this gone?" Uh, if you think about it for more than one fucking second, you'll realize that not every person with a uterus is a woman, and not all women have uteruses. So if I wanted to talk about something that affected like car insurance, I wouldn't just say adults because not all adults own cars. 
I would say people with cars. And that would address the people who have cars. So if I'm talking about everybody with a uterus, I would say people with uteruses. That, that doesn't boil people down to their uterus. It's talking about people who have a uterus. And that's, who, that, that's why I would use the term. If I'm mm-hmm. talking about people with uteruses, I would use the phrase people with uteruses. It, it's crazy how many people get upset about that phrase as if it's some ridiculous, crazy thing to say. Like, no. If I'm talking about people who own sneakers, I'm not going to say everybody with feet. Yeah, I'm talking about people who own the sneakers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if the person was saying it as a joke or not, but whenever it's a dude, I know we're not supposed to do. This. I assume it's, it's technically not. body shaming, and I know we're not supposed to, but I can't resist sometimes. I'll be like, bro, I'm going to be inclusive with you too. I'll use a phrase like people with wieners. I won't be, I'm not going to exclude you. I'll say people with wieners to include you. And I won't say people with impressive wieners because then you're out again. Uh, I, <laughs> you shouldn't say, it's body Impre- shaming, right? It's, uh, it, it a, is. You're not it supposed is. to. You're not supposed I, to. I like, so don't say that. Well, it's, you didn't say, say small. That, you said impressive. And impressive <laughs> is different. <laughs> yeah, who knows what that word means? But don't say it's that, exactly. it's, it's very I'm subjective. Not, I'm sharing that so you won't say that. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Apparently, atheists are missing something about solar. I don't know. Uh, Tim in Michigan, you're on the line with Jimmy and I almost said Matt. Jimmy and Vat, you're on the line with Jimmy and Forrest. <laughs> What's going on? Hello, hello. It says here that you think atheists, but you apparently are an atheist, are missing something, uh, which is solar energy. I'm not an atheist. Oh, see, that's the sound. Oh, that's got what I was listed up. as. All right, so I'm going to fix this here. So you are a theist then? No, I'm not a theist. Okay, well, there's only the two choices. What this, is this? This is a binary situation here. What is the thing you think you are, if not an atheist or a theist? Oh, I know I'm a scientist. Okay, right. So scientist right. is not the answer to the question. Tim, it's do you believe a God question. exists? No. Okay, so you are an atheist. Then you're an fact. atheist, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Tim, now that we've gotten past that. I'm an atheist. Yes, you are. Uh, now, that's atheist, the definition of the word, Tim. Hypothetical if. No, it isn't. Atheist means you do oh, not hold not, oh, uh, Tim, atheist. Just... Tim, atheism is simply the position. It is a theism. Theism is you believe in God, any negation of that. You don't believe whatever is an atheist. Okay, I'm only asking the question because I heard the hypothetical on the line. What was the hypothetical? Talking to a theist and saying, well, if there is a God or if there was a God, the if part. If has nothing to do with atheism. I that was just asking a question, that Tim. Because what I heard. Atheists right, do pose a hypotheticals, for sure. It's yeah. fine. But theists, theists do as well. Like right. a theist could very easily say, if there isn't a God or if I'm wrong and there's a different God. Like it, it's just asking questions, man. Everybody's allowed to ask questions. It's cool. You either believe a thing or you don't. Yeah. That's, that's all That's all yeah, we're saying. That is great. Yes. But what I'm saying as a scientist, the answer is no. There is no if. So there's no confusion. The answer to what, what is okay, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Tim, the answer to what is no, if you're a scientist. There is no God. You believe that okay. science... No, even that's yeah. a hypothetical. You believe that that is a scientific no. claim, that there is no God. Correct. And what experiments did we do to verify that? Writing an allegory and writing mythology. No I'm gonna, hypothetical. Tim, We're I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. First of all, you keep you saying the word hypothetical as though science doesn't like hypotheses. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. heard, but they're sort of the starting point of everything. Uh, but, but Tim, what experiments did was ever done to confirm the claim there is no God? Was the question I asked you? You said something about writing allegories. Those aren't experiments. Oh, the experiment is when the human reads the allegory, the human knows what nonfiction is, the allegory and the mythology 
fiction experiment done. Tim, it's what do you believe a things. scientist is? A science, a scientist is humans observing nature. A scientist is a human observing nature. No, that's I don't what science. Hate science that. I yeah, it's a scientist would be a person who is doing science. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, the, the, the definition is somebody who has extensive knowledge in or is 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 learning science. Someone who is studying or who has extensive knowledge in science. That that's what a scientist is. So I don't hate that definition. I do hate the way that Tim is using it. It's like um, a Bill Nye the wanna... Science Guy kid show. Everyone's a scientist, and it's like that's sweet, Bill. Which... But fuck no, they're not. Well, that's what I say is the thing, <laughs> but, but like also like that is, that is right. That is the definition. But like, it's, I just, I would just say like, you know, the Tim, at, it, you say that you are a scientist as well. So surely, you know, that in science, we never accept a hypothesis. We only fail to reject a hypothesis. And then if we can't prove ourselves wrong, that's when we start to move forward with an idea as if it may be true until new evidence comes up that, cha that changes our minds. That's, that's how science works. We never just say this, I know it has to be true uh, because you know, whatever. So like the thing that we say here on this show is not, I know there is no God. It's, I don't believe there is a God, which is a big, big, big difference. We do have some hosts that say that it seems logically impossible that a God exists, but even that is still a hypothesis that we have failed to reject. And it seems like you're taking a hard atheism position of saying, absolutely no, there is no such thing as a God. We've proven it. And then Which you're going to fall yeah. right into the usual theistic trap of, have you looked under every rock in the entire universe to check to see where God is? And if you haven't checked every single rock in the Andromeda galaxy to find God, then you don't really know for sure. And I don't think you're willing to make that right. claim. Science you can't understand? even demonstrate that all, that science is capable of discovering all things that are. Uh, uh, and it's, so that's, the, that's the, the whole idea, point of, yeah. The idea of suggesting that it is a scientific claim to say there are no gods or there is no God yeah. uh, is, is frankly just incorrect. Uh, Tim, what field of science are you in? There's multiple. You want me to go down the list? I want to know which Talk one you yeah. are qualified. I'll start with what do you astronomy. Do? I'll okay. start with astronomy first are, and astrophysics. Okay, so you are an astrophysicist. Now, is this a you have determined you have labeled yourself as such, or you have accolades to claim such a thing? Both. Wild, wild. With okay. with some of the things you have said today, that's 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 fair. Anyway, you called to say we're missing something. Atheists are missing something, and that that thing is solar energy. Right? Correct. So tell me how I am missing solar energy. Because you don't understand how humans make observations. I don't Weird. see how those two things are related. No, Tim, Tim, please tell me how I don't understand how humans make observations because it's wild. I, I knew I was talking to a scientist. I did not know I was talking to a motherfucking mind reader who knows my mind and my abilities and my capabilities. So Tim, start with that and then we'll come back to solar. How is it you know that I... Or maybe you referred to Forrest, or it was a royal you. Don't understand how you. people make observations. Because you wouldn't have asked me that question. Why is that, Tim? Because you would have mentioned the sun. No star, no observation. I did mention Simple. the sun when I used the word it, solar what? energy. Only because I said it. Not when you're talking about it, when you're explaining it. Tim, you ask especially when you say science, Tim, you say looking topic, under every rock. Tim. You have to have solar energy to look under every rock. Oh my God, Tim. Oh my God. Are you Bro, fucking high? Exactly. Yes, Tim, flashlights Tim, flashlights Tim, exist. You know, I can look, look under rocks, rocks at night. I won't, <laughs> even, I won't even. Be quiet, Tim. I'm going to let you talk in a moment. But at the moment, I think I'm talking to somebody who is in a chemically altered state. Mm. you called in. We wanted clarification on whether you were an atheist or not. We had a discussion about that. Then you said that atheists are missing something called solar energy. 
and you said, we would have brought up the sun when asking for looking, which was Forrest's example of, have you looked under every rock in the universe? So Tim, I'm unmuting you now. Have you looked under every rock in the universe with solar energy? Have you done that, Tim? You don't have to look under every Tim. rock in the universe. You just Tim, look yes, you do. Under the rocks on Earth. No. On Earth. Humans Tim. are on Earth. Tim. How far okay. do you think humans it's, have traveled? All right. I'm going to mute you again because you think it's that you get to yell over us. Tim, whether it's God or whatever else, everything that can be under rocks in the universe is not necessarily represented on our planet only. There are possibilities of under rock things which would blow your goddamn mind <laughs> in other worlds and other places the idea that you are a scientist with accolades i i am questioning more than ever but forrest i think you had something you wanted to go over with him you have the call system up right yeah do i do yeah. unmute him at, at your yeah. will go for it well, it, it just blows my mind that like we are clearly talking about his initial claim, which is that he can say scientifically verifiably that there's no such thing as a god. And all I brought up was there's you know the obvious answer that any theist would give you, the one that I've gotten several times is you haven't looked under every rock in the universe to find God. God could have made the whole universe and is now hiding on some faraway planet and some faraway star system and some faraway galaxy that we've never even heard of before. And then you're bringing up solar energy as if you, number one, can't look under things without the sun when fucking flashlights exist. And also saying that that has nothing to do with what you're talking about here when that's exactly what we started the call talking about. So, Tim, I'll bring you back. Uh, I just want to know, like, it, genuinely, what are you trying to get at here? Because it sounds like we're getting in the weeds about you know semantics and about suns and about rocks and all this other stuff just really quickly please just tell us what is the point that you're trying to make you are back on the point of everything on earth is our star the sun no star no life and that's not no so that's hypothetical it's k-n-o-w know what the sun is, know what the star is, and you can look under every rock on Earth. I didn't say not in other galaxies, other life forms, yes, they can look under rocks. I didn't say they couldn't. No, nobody, t Tim, no. I think maybe we've gotten some wires crossed here, no, we okay? Have. No, Tim, nobody's Tim saying that defending. you can't look under rocks. Nobody's saying that other life I know. forms can't do I'm that. Not saying that That's not what we're know. talking about. I'm not saying that either. That's what you just said. So, I like, here's the thing, no, man. I agree with you. What, Listen. What, what we're saying oh, is, I, I, so I understand that you need the guy. sun for life to happen here on Earth. I get that. All life on Earth relies on the sun. For, uh, it, you know, saving for some, you know, chemotrophs and, and around hydrothermal vents and shit. Even then you can make some arguments, but like, we'll just say, generally speaking, all life on earth relies on the sun. I'm fine with that. Why does that have yeah. anything to do with, with a God? Because that's where humans get confused when they think God and they don't think star first. So Tim why would they think star own, first? Why would they think star first when 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 the theists that we talk to on this show, the people who believe in the Bible, call in and tell us that God made the sun and all the other stars? Why would they try to put the star above the thing that they think made it? So they can learn periodic table. What does that have? So, Tim, uh, uh, my last question for you is... Oh, yeah. You know, you know I got credentials. You heard that. that. Yeah, yeah. Tim, what are your credentials? You, Tell me about those. Where did you oh get... Your, you said you're an astro... Yeah, hang on, hang on, Tim. You said you're an astro... Stop. Hang on! Jesus Christ. Are you capable of letting a person finish a question without interrupting? Tim, what are your credentials? You said you're an astrophysicist. What are your astrophysicist accolades? I have degrees. What kind of degrees? What de what degrees did you earn? Listen, I'm not giving out personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, no, you fucking don't. You're you're just a liar. What, because you're I just want to know what your degrees are. You want? I'll give you All my right. highest. 
All right, what's your high, what's your highest sure. accolade? Go ahead. Sure. United States Marine Corps veteran. Yeah, okay. So dog shit. All right, bye. So not not, I not that's not a I degree. That's, that's not, a, not degree. a degree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've 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 met people like well, in the Navy, I was basically a nuclear physicist. I've met that asshole before. Uh -huh. And I was just done. Oh my god. I knew it was going to be something like that. I've got degrees. I've got my highest mm -hmm. accolade, the Marine Corps. I have known Marines who have been great people. Uh, they're mm. usually the exception. Uh, look, the Marine, if you, it's not a positive. The military runs as a cult. I don't have many positive things to say, but I know many people uh, uh, who come out of the military who somehow managed to escape that dog shit. Uh, I, got, and I, would, I got all sorts of degrees. 45 degrees, yeah, yeah. 90 degrees, yeah. 120 degrees. Yeah, I'm acute. Uh, anyway, fucking, go. I don't like... If somebody's going to come to me and tell me, let's say there's a chemical spill. Mm. Everybody's showing up to the scene. We got to fix this. We got to fix this. We got to fix this. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Rob from Air Force Security Forces is here. <laughs> we'll all be okay. We're going to be fine, people. He, he knows what the sun is <laughs> and, and, and periodic table. He spent his days arresting his friends on the base for going one mile an hour over the speed limit. He's here. The security forces kid is here. He failed his testing and couldn't get placed as a career. So they said, hey, Johnny. What did I say, Rob, earlier? We're going to go with Johnny now. Hey, Johnny, you suck at this. So we're either going to send you home. Go send you back to mom, or you can go be security forces at the base with the most nukes. Fucking weirdly, this is a real thing, people. Anyway, you can go mm -hmm. be security forces over there. And he's got the accolades to solve the climate crisis, to clean up chemical spills. The This motherfucker's going to build those artificial wombs from call number one. Thank you very much. Hey, Fuck I, I think this, I think the thing that you're missing here is that nobody's saying that aliens can't look under rocks, Jim. Yeah. Like, no, nobody's saying that, and that's that's really where we as atheists are getting hung yeah. up. <laughs> Man, I just love that he was it like, should... "I'm going to tell you the highest accolade," with the presumption that the revelation he is a veteran would make me go, "Oh well, you get a baseline oh, of respect no, from I'm, me." I'm I sorry. Come, I... <laughs> I come from a military family, bud. I I tried to join the military, wasn't allowed to medically. Uh, but uh, I, one thing I've learned from my military family, and every one of them who was in the military would agree, would go, including the shitty ones, like the conservative ones. You don't have to respect people just because they were in the military. It doesn't tell you fucking goddamn shit about a person. What What's blowing my mind is like he was saying uh, he never said like what degrees he has or what they're in or something okay. like that. He's just, trying to just, call back. I, Hang on, let's bring him back up. Oh, let him in. Let <laughs> okay. him in. Okay. Tim, Tim, I'm, Tim, I, I cut in. I, I, I cut over the mod. I know you were in there with the mod. What in the world are you calling back for? Man, I was talking about solar energy here on Earth. I, I know, I know, I know. I what? Hey, do you have what? A, what degrees do you have, Tim? Yeah, yeah. What you, degrees have you achieved? What have you earned? One degree. First computer networking. Okay, so not what 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 astro not, not astrophysics. What astrophysics okay, degree? That was just my first degree. I thought you wanted me to go chronologically. No, no who I said that? To... Who said chronologically? Oh, Wait, all right. You said because I have to think hang about on. it. I Tim, told you I Tim, got a list. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, I know you got a list. I write lists all the time too. Different. These are the cool X-Men powers I, I wish I had. These are the cool. Tim, what astrophysics-related degree do you have? It's my degree in political science. I had to take physics and astronomy, and I've been studying ever since. Tim, was this a real so, call today, or was this a joke? No, I've been listening to your show, and I hear when there's that confusion with theists, when they're like, uh -huh. what if? No, 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 Tim. That, what Tim if that's, this is not, this is not the question. You're Jim. answering a different question. Jim. Go ahead. Go ahead, Forrest. No, that was, uh, well, I was just gonna, I was going to say, just, just, just to be clear, Tim, just, just turn this around on me, okay? I can very plainly tell you, uh, I have undergraduate degrees in education with a science focus, in biology 
in liberal arts with a biology focus, in integrative biology with an organismic and evolutionary biofocus. I have a master's degree in biological anthropology, and I'm current with a, a research in paleoecological reconstruction through a stabilized dope analysis. And I'm currently working on a second master's degree in biomedical science with a focus on vertebrate paleontology. That's my, that's my pedigree as a scientist. That's my training. Um, during my very first degree, the one in education, I took several classes because it was a science focused degree. It was science education focused. I took several classes in astronomy and physics and astrophysics. Do you think that I should call myself an astrophysics, uh, astrophysicist, given the fact that all of my training has been in biology and I had a little, a couple of classes in physics and astronomy? Do, do you think it's reasonable for me to call myself an astrophysicist? You practice it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the no. answer I was expecting. No, uh, look, Tim, yeah. I'm on your side. It, I do. Hang on, well, Tim. Hang on. I'm on your side with this. Forrest cannot call himself an astrophysicist until he joins the military. Please don't call back this time. We're <laughs> we're good. Bye. Uh Okay, moving on. Hey, uh, 720-619-2288, 720-619-2288 uh, to call in. Please, look, here's what you've gotten so far today. Proof. Proof. That it has nothing to do whether you're an atheist or a theist. You will be met with the level of intellectual honesty you present is, is what you will be re have returned. Actually, that's not true. I wasn't intellectually dishonest, but it will be purport there will be a proportional response. If, if you are a theist, I would really love to talk to you about what you believe and why, and just be honest. But proof today, we don't only roast theists. In fact, we don't mm -hmm. roast theists. We roast dishonest people. We roast right. assholes. Uh, and so, and, uh, go ahead. I, I, I'm still laughing at. I don't. I can't call myself an astrophysicist until I join the military. That's fucking hysterical. <laughs> uh, best line of the show. Um, also, well, if, if, show if, if quote if quote the lion is watching this right now, Forrest can't call himself an astrophysicist until he joins the military. Is a great one. Uh, also, <laughs> all the people in the chat right now who are saying, yeah, Forrest, but what about the sun? Love that. <laughs> Love that shit, too. Champion of the sun. You're a master of karate, master of and, karate friendship and friendship for everyone. For everyone. Fucking I just realized there's a delay, and that's going to sound terrible. Yeah, that's going to sound terrible. It does. <laughs> I just, I'm excited that Dayman was on the line today. Anyway. Uh, seven two zero six one nine two two eight eight. There's also a link in the description. Uh, I I didn't ask uh, our first caller, and I should have whether or not the a person with the abortion question for the caller, not the caller themselves, whether or not that person was a theist or an atheist. But I assumed that whole time also atheist because being an atheist you, is you not kind of the assumption to make. Yeah. All right, this is an interesting question. We'll take Sergio next. Sergio, we got some loud sound. It almost sounds like you're driving. I need you to immediately fix that. What's going on, Sergio? Hey, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, are you driving? Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not driving, no. Okay. Uh, well, when you don't talk, it's, it's really loud. So just pose your question, and then we're going to answer it. Uh, uh, we're going to drop the call and answer it without you there, unless you can fix that background noise. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to move on, uh, a little now. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for taking my call. I'm a, a long-time listener, first-time caller. Cool. And, um, well, uh, my, my question is about um, atheists uh, turned into theism again. I mean, uh, Partly inspired by uh, Aya Ayan Hirsch Hirsch Ali. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, it's a question I've had in my mind uh, for a while, and um, I'm I'm I just believe. <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm nervous, and English is my second language. It's okay. Um, you're fine. Your English I've is better than my Spanish. You're doing great. <laughs> I've been reconstructing for, from my faith uh, for the last four years, uh, more or less, and thanks a lot uh, to you. I mean, you've influenced my my interest in rational thinking, and 
Well, um, sure. I I still don't understand how someone can be an atheist and what kind of uh, thinking, what uh, reasons can get them back into uh, atheist thinking. Okay. Because the the argument the argument of uh, they they weren't real atheists they were mis uh, people who hate uh, God but uh, actually believe, believe in God so uh, that sounds a lot like uh, no no true Scotsman and I don't like that argument because of that so yep. uh, what what do you think would con convince an atheist to believe again in in a in a god cool I, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put you on mute right now so you can still hear us in case you don't have the show up right now but i just put you on mute because yeah like i said the sounds are really tough but sergio is basically calling and asking somewhat inspired by the fact that i on has announced that she has become a christian uh which is a whole thing that we'll probably briefly touch on but wants to know what could explain atheists turning back to theism uh, and mm -hmm. mentioning that sort of thing of like uh, atheists who become theists that atheists will sometimes be like, well, they weren't a real atheist before, which is not true. Right. And as, as Sergio points out is a no true Scotsman thing um, to that. Uh, it, so there are things like that, like no true Scotsman fallacies. Those for sure exist. But the other things that do exist is sometimes it is Correct to say, though, you do or don't have a label applied to you, like the caller earlier, who is a scientist, mm. not an atheist, because those are the options, scientist, yeah, atheist, right. or theist. Uh, meanwhile, by the actual definitions, the caller was an atheist and just didn't recognize. And so uh, we talk about descriptive labels, not prescriptive labels. So while there are lots of atheists um, who aren't necessarily atheists for good reasons, who aren't necessarily you know, intelligent people or the key word I'm going to go with here, skeptical people, whether a person was or wasn't actually a skeptic uh, is the thing that I find much more interesting because I have learned it was a sort of disillusionment moment for me after becoming an atheist when I, not an atheist, but an atheist YouTuber, where I thought I was going to be joined what would be a robust community of, of critical thinkers, skeptics, and non-bigots, that it turns out most athe atheists aren't skeptics, most atheists aren't critical thinkers, and most atheists aren't not bigots. They are. There are lots of all of those, uh, unfortunately. So whether a person believes in God doesn't have anything to do with those things. Um... Uh, I'll, I'll let Forrest take the before you have. Do you want to give some theories yeah. on on why people go back? I think the most important thing you said there at the end is that you know being an atheist is a single position on a single question. I don't believe there's a god, and that's it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're good at critical thinking. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have good reasons to not believe. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people. Anybody who's ever been in a middle school before knows how many people will be an atheist just to be contrarian and actually do believe in a god, but it's more edgy and weird to say not. Um, there's there's lots of things there. I think the biggest thing that's important to talk about is that something that we grapple with a lot on these shows is religious trauma. People who talk about how they have been seriously abused by uh, their family members or church leaders or whatnot in the name of the religion that they're in, and how even after you know years or even decades of of uh, after deconstruction, still struggle with fears of hell, still struggle with shames about sex and sexuality, still struggle with with body image issues, still struggle with issues about their their role in their marriage or things like that, because those are the scars that religions leave, and so I think. The most charitable thing to say would be that, you know, I'm sure that there have been plenty of atheists who have returned back to their original faiths because it is more comfortable in that way. You you, you succumb to that level of of, of trauma, um, and you fall back into that way because it it feels potentially safer, even though it is more destructive to you. Um, it's just what you grew up with. It's what's more convenient for your family. It's what your uh, uh, married family or your birth family demands of you. It's what's around you in society. Um, like that's just there's there's a million reasons why someone might do that. But I think more likely it's because I do think it's a foul, a no true Scotsman fallacy to say, oh, they were never a good enough atheist or never a real atheist. 
but I, I do think that it's acceptable to say that a lot of atheists out there um, actually do just have an issue with the church at large or with the gods on offer and haven't actually developed any real good arguments or reasons to be atheists. Um, and so when a, a shitty you know, religious argument comes along, they don't have a defense against it. And they've only known just to be an atheist because that's what they have have been. So yeah, that's, that's, I would say I would kind of straddle that gap a little bit and say, you're right. It's just as shitty to say, well, if you're an atheist, you were never really a good Christian. It's just as shitty to say, if you've become a Christian, you were never really an atheist. That's silly. But it, it does stand to reason to say you may have some shit that you're dealing with, or you may have never really had a good reason to not believe in the first place, and that that you should do some serious thinking about it. That's my thought. Yeah. As for Ayan Hirsi Ali, I've, I've actually always thought she was not a Christian, but a fraud. Uh, I, I mm. For years, she is... She is one of the people who I would get suggested a lot, especially because I do so much intersectional stuff uh, over the years, uh, and I just never addressed and never was like, yeah, I'll definitely try, or no, I won't, or whatever. Uh, I'd never put a single moment of effort into it because she never impressed me as a as a skeptic, and she said a lot of stuff, and even this stuff where I, I don't even think... It's kind of like, uh, uh, not that I'm endorsing this guy, he sucks too, but Richard Dawkins wrote a letter to her basically saying, you're no more a Christian than I am. And his reasons are pretty well laid out in response to her quote unquote reasons for being, uh, she's basically, it, it, and this was going to get to my point. The biggest reason why people go back to religion who didn't have it before is a desperation for community. That's the most common one. Uh, in fact, there is a person who used to do YouTube call-in shows, and I'm not going to call the person out, but YouTube call-in shows, uh, I'm trying to remember if they were ever on this network, I think a couple times, um, but used to do YouTube call-in shows, knew the values and the tenets of skepticism, understood why it was valuable, and then clearly in a desperation to not just be in a community, but wanting to be a part of a specific community with specific people, um, suddenly became a certain type of theist and then uh, the first thing as they as they were announcing their theism was all of this really shallow rationale of why you don't uh, you don't get to insist that I be skeptical about it and you don't get to ask me questions and you don't get to interrogate me or ask the same types of questions that I used to ask people uh, uh, f on oh. these shows. You don't get to do that. And it's kind of like, yeah, fine. If you want to isolate yourself from all of that, you can isolate yourself. If you want to put your other relationships and friendships in a kind of shittier place while you, and it's like, I don't hate that person. And in a lot of ways I still like that person, but I, I it's just like, it is, it is to me clearly a desperation, not just for this person, but in general for that sense of belonging, that sense of community, wanting specific sometimes individuals to accept you or wanting to just feel accepted uh, because, you know, at, at only the cost of 10% of your income, your dignity and your integrity, you can have compulsory friends. Friends who have no choice but to be your friends. Uh, uh, and so it's, it's uh, yeah, it's fucking, that's what I, that's that's my little take on there. Sergio, I'm going to unmute you here. Uh, well, I'll unmute you here in a second when, when it's at the end of the question mark. Is that is that basically anything else you wanted to ask about before we move on here? Uh, no, I, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, I met some so well, people who call themselves uh, atheists, but they they barely talk about the existence of God. Uh, they are most, more focused on religion itself, Christianity, uh, and yeah, I I get it. They they there are many possible factors that affect the reasoning of uh, of people yes uh, well one just one last thing thing uh, i i'm totally 100 percent uh, pro choice pro bodily autonomy mm -hmm. and uh, i'm all for for women and people with you 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 choose to uh, uh, right to choose, sorry. Yeah, and yeah. I'm all, all uh, pro bodily autonomy, but um, there are some issues that are barely taught outside of, of 
specific activist groups like uh, uh, child circumcision and uh, genital mutilation of intersex children, and mm -hmm. they are they are not as tough as they should in, in mainstream. You know, uh, you, um, you could call call it atheist community and uh, bodily autonomy activists groups, uh, and especially since the USA has such a high rate of of circum circumcision and and it's very normalized there, as, and it's in in my opinion, it's uh, also about uh, bodily autonomy and. Uh, the the respecting the 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 right to choose over one's uh, body and uh, yes yeah, uh, that's my uh, my not 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 so much as a question but as um you know as uh, uh, so, no, no i don't know as a suggest a suggestion maybe All right. uh, because cool uh, sorry. yeah i feel you sergio all right man well, cool. We're gonna let you go, uh, but yeah, appreciate it. And we'll. Uh, I'm gonna mute you. I'm gonna mute you as, as I say goodbye here, just because the it's real loud. It's real loud that background noise that comes through. It's and I get it un uh, unfiltered for everybody else. So I'm getting the full effect where everyone else is presumably getting reduced. But yeah, thank you, Sergio. Uh, and and call back anytime you've got an additional question. But I do agree as far as um, we probably could. We probably could bother talking more about things like circumcision and the rights of intersex people and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. would be would be a it, good thing to talk about more. Yeah, I, I always try to make it a thing because like whenever we talk about trans people and then it comes to biology and people jump on, well, there's a lot of different chromosomal variations and there's no such thing as you know the the, the biological man or a biological woman, which I agree with those things, but like oftentimes it'll just conflate trans and intersex people into one group which that doesn't do a lot of people any good. Um, and then also, you know, we don't talk often about how, you know, uh, intersex children, babies are born with ambiguous genitalia. The doctor's just like, that's probably a vagina. We'll just do the, you know what I mean? And like, that's, that does happen an awful lot. And it, as far as freaking circumcision is concerned, it is wild to me, genuinely, genuinely wild to me that we are in this day and age still arguing about whether or not we should be chopping up baby dicks. And that's just like, ah, oh, maybe. Maybe that's, I, I want them to look like mine. That's what. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that's the, the day. Whole thing. That's the day I'll go back to church with you, Dad. The day you get me back my foreskin. Um, <laughs> it's around here somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I, it's 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 in a baby book or something. We hold on to it. Or something. that's not how my dad sounds. It's like sounds. pressed like a flower. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Between between the pages of what book would it be? What what would be the funniest book to be pressed? The with part him? of the Bible where where David brings two thousand foreskins to the king of whatever to to, to prove his loyalty. That part is right in there. I I don't know why, but my brain just keeps thinking like to kill a mockingbird would be a pretty funny one to put it in. But whatever. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So look, hey, here's the deal. We put a poll in chat. About 400 of you have responded so far. And of that, 3%, roughly 12 of you, or potentially exactly 12 of you, said that you do believe and you will call. And we're waiting. We are waiting for you to call in. It said, you said that you mm -hmm. will call. You hear the call and you will call in. We'll do it. Do it, you, you, the, you bastards. The beacons no, are lit. No, no. <laughs> do it. Do it. Call in. Now, 4% of you said you believe, but you will not be calling. And look, at least you're being honest. However, I would encourage you all to call. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got. First Peter 315 and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a, a solid 7% of, of everybody in is a believer. And people who have said, don't be a liar. If you say you're going to call, do call in. Uh, because as far as I know, theists are not supposed to be liars. Not supposed to be. So give us that call. Uh, the, the, the now we're up to almost 15 of you um, who have said that you do believe and you will be calling in. 720-619-2288 if you're in the U.S. Otherwise, there's a web link in the description, which is, I don't know, we've had 15 blocked calls come in, probably from the same person 15 times. But um, Let I, you, the, them through. Let them no, through. It's, it's almost certainly the people who just you know, scream slurs or whatever. Uh, um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, always going to be here to cheer for chaos. That's why we need you to to actual be a producer because I'm just yeah. I mean, show, nobody wants to see this show if I was running it. Forrest, for some reason, wants to talk to the teeth guy, but you can't reward bad behavior. I do, I do. I just have one question, just one question for him, and that's all I want. I just, God I healed know. two teeth in my, and I'm just sitting there like, look, my dentist is handsome, but I wouldn't call him God. <laughs> Unless you want it to be too. I don't mean, you know if it's under the right circumstances in the right moments. Uh, Nicola in Serbia. Come on, here we go. Nicola in Serbia, you're on the line with Forrest and Jimmy. How are you doing, Nicola? Oh, sorry. Hang on. Now I should be able to hear you. Go ahead. Try again there, bud. How are you? How are you? Yeah, just fine. How are you? Hello. Oh, I'm I'm great. May a bit sick, but you know, all right. Is it okay with you if occasionally I go Nicola? It's absolutely fine. They do that in my class, so you know that's normal. I had a feeling <laughs> I, that I wasn't the first, but I wanted to be the most recent. What's going on? Yeah, you are the most recent, yeah. That's right. They kind of stopped <laughs> doing it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start with you know first I. Absolutely love you, Forrest. You are great. I oh, I want to study you. molecular biology mostly because of you. Hey, oh, so, yeah. So <laughs> I, I had a I had an option in my undergrad to specialize in molecular bio, and I turned that shit down because it is insane. So if you have the brain for it, dude, we need more <laughs> people like you. I'm <laughs> I'm a big picture kind of oh, guy. Know. That that oh, <laughs> I promise you, I will. I will. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right on, me, you know. It's so, very cool. Yeah, but it's very cool. Yeah, it is. It is like uh, currently I'm in like med school, so you know we are not uh, really that uh, don't have that much focus on biology, but you know we do mm -hmm. study it. it. I do have it as a subject, so it's very fun, you know. Right. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that really means a yeah. lot to me. Thank you so much for telling me that. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I'm like a new, you know, new to atheism, basically, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I really love, you know, talking to people, having rational debates and, you know, some people say I'm like mentally above my, you know, age and everything, but, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. really affect me. So I just kind of, you know, I, worry, I was in like a few of these uh, debates, if you can call them that. And these very, very weird topics were, you know, coming up. So I, I just wanted to ask you, Forrest and Jimmy, how you would handle the situation. Because, I mean, I did my best. We didn't agree to anything. So, you know, mm -hmm. I want to see your point of view on these, like, you know, topics. Sure. Word. So, uh, you, yeah, yeah. did you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Pose, oh, no, pose, one, of the, uh, okay. We're pose, into it. pose one of the topics. Yeah, so basically the topics were something along line along the lines of epilepsy and diabetes are and especially type 1 diabetes are caused by demons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, and, okay. and uh, yeah, that that was my first reaction. And not just, you know, demons possessing or something like that. They combine with your soul and then interact with your physical body. Now that one seems healthy. right. What's the next one? That's you're, you're <laughs> correct. That's how you go on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the the thing that I would say to that is that like you know we actually do know what causes those things, and we it, it, like medically speaking, and you can quickly do a Google search and like just look up like what causes epilepsy. Um, and here is from Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, there are many possible causes of epilepsy, including an imbalance of nerve, sig nerve signaling uh, um, chemicals called neurotransmitters, tumors, strokes, and brain damage from illness or injury, or some combination of these. The majority of cases, there's a, it, it goes on to talk about like things. And it even says here that there's some times where there's no detectable cause. We're just not quite sure what's happening. And then you would, if, if you say, okay, well, here's something where we don't know um, what our what are treatments of epilepsy? And so we find, ah, here's actually a bunch of uh, uh, anti-epileptic drugs that do this. Um, there's, there's, I know you can do a, a 
you know, splitting of, of the hemispheres of the brain, you cut the corpus callosum. I'm pretty sure that's one in like extreme cases yeah, yeah. where it stops the crosstalk between the two different hemispheres and that stops it. So like, even in a situation where we don't know exactly what's causing it, we have treatments for it and we have ways of stopping. So then the next question that I have is, um, number one, if we're going to say that demons are causing this, why do demons look an awful lot like an imbalance of neurotransmitters? Why do demons look an awful lot like, you know, this, this, this weird cross wire and cross talking? More importantly, even in the situations where we say, we don't know what causes this and you say, oh, it must be demons. Why are demons treatable with pharmaceuticals? Why can the demons not hurt you anymore when we cut the corpus callosum in the brain? You know what I mean? If this was a demon, yeah. it would presumably be something that we can't find any like physical explanation for and we have no physical treatments for so maybe find a disease like that to point to but even then i'm going to be very skeptical of your claim because first you have to prove that demons exist before i believe you that they're doing this thing um so yeah that's that that would be my answer to that is that you know we actually know most of the causes of these diseases and we have workable treatments for those diseases. If these were demonic possessions, I don't think either of those things would be the case. Um, and even if we had none of that, you'd first have to show me that demons are a real thing. That would be my answer. Yeah. Forrest and I have different approaches on this. We've actually talked about it on the show before and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and had, uh, uh, some disagreements over it, uh, on, on how much to go after the what versus the why. Uh, cause Forrest will mm -hmm. let a person do their what for five hours straight. And it's, a, yes, it's I will. so entertaining, but <laughs> I wouldn't do what Forrest did person. just said personally, now I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying I wouldn't, I, uh, the thing that I would be considering is I am giving them the framework to answer back. And when you give that to somebody who has magic on their side, <clears throat> they, they, they already have the, the component. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the demons magically split the hemisphere and then they magically. And so, you know, there's still free will. So I've just put on my ex Mormon hat and was just like, that's easy, man. That's, that's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's the mechanism by which the demons are doing it, but it's still the demons. I would just start at the focus on the why from the onset of, of, of okay. Your claim is epilepsy or uh, what was it? Type one diabetes is caused yeah. by demons. Why do you believe that? And then I'd go through basically just a discussion of epistemology and go, why is it demons? Why is it not X, Y, or Z? Or how did you eliminate X, Y, or Z? Not why is it not X, Y, or Z? Because then, like I said, you're offering them the framework again by which to answer. But how did you rule out X, Y, or Z? And then you can even engage with other ridiculous propositions. Then you can say, how did you rule out genies? How did you rule out blah, blah, blah? Um, and mm -hmm. then you take the, their presentation of what they did, how they ruled other things out and ask them basically to apply it back or point out where there is, cause that's, that's like the easiest way to get any theist in a bind, which by the way, if you're a theist, I'm still waiting for you to call in. Cause we've got like 30 of you now have said that you would, you do believe and you would call on that poll. Call in now, uh, 720-619-2288 or the web link in the description. Anyway, sorry, Nicola. Uh, uh, I, I really want these theists to call in. Um, I, and so personally, I would be going harder after the why than the what. I'm more entertained by Forrest's method, uh, yeah. I, uh, but I don't find it as efficient. <clears throat> um, but it's way I more agree. entertaining. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of you know why people maybe love the Forrest more <laughs> because he's in the ouch. Yeah, ouch. Fuck you, no, Jimmy. No, I, I, I don't. I love you. Too. <laughs> You said that's why people love Forrest more. I don't know that we established that. No, I get it. I do too. I love everybody uh, more than me. Uh, uh, my feelings. God, I'm hurt. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what was the, did you want to do another topic? You said there was other ones. Oh, Where yo, yes, yes. There, there, there's a lot. I mean, I'm just, I just wrote down like on a piece of paper right here next to me, uh, two topics. Sure. Well, I'm oh, still like waiting 100. for Theus to call in, so you got you got time. Yeah, so Theus, I, 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 I just, look at look at me. Hang on, I'm gonna make quick, one know. second, Nicola. No, 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 you don't have yeah, to, yeah. even have to be quick because we don't have a theist waiting. So I'm gonna look in the theist. I don't believe in your God, but <laughs> if your God exists, I want to believe in him or her. But let's be realistic; you probably think it's a him, but or her. 
or them, or if your God exists, <laughs> legitimately, I want to know that. Please call and tell me how I could find that out. Please call and tell me about your God. Please tell me the qualities of your God, why your God would be a good God if your God did exist, why you would defend Christianity. Uh, uh, if you're the type of person who has ever said the phrase, even if God didn't exist, I'd still be a Christian or I'd still be a fill in the blank. Oh, yeah. Please yeah. call in and explain that to me because I that's one that genuinely— I don't understand why my, Mormons love to say that. Even if I what, even if I stop believing in God, I'd still be a Mormon. If you believe that about your religion, it's one I don't understand. It that how a person could say that. And if you don't understand mm -hmm. why I don't understand, call and I'll explain it to you. And if you think you can explain to me why, even if God doesn't exist, it would be better to have this religion. It would be better to still pretend. Like I said, we're we're over thirty of you in chat saying that you believe and would call, and yet have yeah, not I did, called. I did the math. Thirty-one point six five people said that if, they would call us. Yeah, I and I. I just to, want the point six five. Well, if most of a person would call. I. So, if we're going yeah. with traditional American politics, just like a a woman. <laughs> nice. That's not <laughs> what I believe. That's what no, actually no, no, I think no, that of was more. Not. Was it, yeah, yeah. Were women and black people two-thirds of a person? Who was two-thirds of a person in the Constitution? Not the Constitution, in the uh, in American law. Or was it in the Constitution? I don't remember. Fucking yeah, you're, talking about, uh, that, you're talking about freed slaves? Was it the three-fifths the three compromise? Well, that yeah, wasn't yeah. freed slaves. Three-fifths, yeah. That was, it was three, three out of every five slaves was counted as a person or something like that. I believe I've had two hours of sleep in the last 30 hours, and I'd like I'd like people to not <laughs> need my political wit to be uh, sharp today. Anyway, Nicola, go ahead. What's your next one? What's your next thing? Damn. Yeah, so on my next topic, maybe I'll, like it's connected to this one, but the thing about this topic is that a priest actually told me this. Okay. So not like debates, and you know, I mean, it was in a debate, but a priest just came up randomly said this and then like went out so the thing he said was like uh, uh uh illness if you believe that you are sick and ill you will the the, the sickness will manifest you know like you create hmm. illnesses and then i ask, asked him like so for an example encephalitis which is like you know infection of the brain so i just believe hmm. strong enough and my brain causes an infection of itself you know it like doesn't make sense, but it was really like a great topic. I think that that one can mostly uh, be countered by the fact that like I, I, I there, it's not very hard to find dozens and dozens and dozens of people that have gotten a terrifying call from a doctor on a on a Tuesday afternoon where they went in for a regular checkup and some tests came back very scary. Um, I have a friend who just got over a uh, uh, cancer. Because literally, he just kind of had a sore armpit. Weird. Went to the doctor. Turns out he had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Crazy. I have another friend who was feeling kind of down in the dumps. Had mm. some tests run. Surprise, he had a brain tumor. Like, none of these things were like, these people were feeling bad about themselves or expecting this in any way. Um, you know, uh, they, they, they weren't manifesting anything. They felt okay. And then one day they kind of just didn't and they went and got it checked out and it turned out to be something fucking insane. And that's a very scary situation. Um, that it, it makes no sense to say these people willed themselves into this kind of illness. What it sounds yeah. like your priest is saying is um, this, there is this documentary over here in America that was just God awful called what the bleep do we know? Um, that's actually the title of it is what the bleep do we know? Um, and it was, um, the the whole topic of the documentary was trying to put a scientific spin on this belief that if you just want something bad enough and focus on it every day and believe with your whole heart that you'll get it, that the 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 universe will vibrate in such a way that your brain waves will strum the strings of time and bring you this magical thing that you want. And and one of the parts of that documentary they talked about 
how uh, uh, you have hormones and peptides in your body that that uh, you know they're it all. If you only have sad, stress hormones all the time, then your body's gonna be building receptors for those, and you're gonna always only feel sad. And and we call it disease because it's dis ease. You're not at ease anymore, and that's where sickness comes from. Just absolute fucking dumb shit. Um, and that kind of belief. Um, is very prevalent in, in metaphysical circles. A lot of people really think that the key to health is positive thinking. Um, and yeah, there's actually that, evidence, yeah. not, only, not only is there not evidence for that, there's actually good evidence against that as well. Um, if I remember correctly, there was one study done where they had some very sick people in hospitals and they actually did a scientific test of prayer to see if prayer healing worked. Um, and not only did it not help them, but actually you had a group of people that weren't getting prayed over and two groups of people that were getting prayed over. One of them knew that they were getting prayed over and the other one didn't know. And the people who were getting prayed over and did and, and knew it, the people who did know that they were getting prayed over actually sometimes had worse health outcomes because they weren't getting better and they felt bad, like they were letting everybody down <laughs> and that, and that did make them feel worse. Um, <laughs> So like, yeah, it just, it's, it's one of those things. I would go back to the, the original thing. If, if, you know, if the only thing that I need to do to get, you know, pick your favorite disease, you know, atherosclerosis is to sit here and think about it, then why does avoiding trans fats, why is that a thing? Why can't I go out and eat as many cheeky nugs as I want and never worry about my heart? Cause I deeply believe that I'm never going to have coronary artery disease. Why, you know, uh, uh, if, if how often do you think people with heart attacks think about it first? How many times do people with heart attack, with, with with cancer sit there and just be like, "I have cancer, I have cancer"? It's it's just kind of a weird, ridiculous proposition that goes in the face of the fact that we actually have testable and and observable causes for disease and actual functional ways to treat disease. Those again, just like with the demons thing, that shit wouldn't be true if it was magic, and that's yeah, that's yeah. that's all I would say there. I'm sure, Jimmy, you probably have something totally different again. I, do, I mean, I'd mostly just stick to the why, because it's another silly one where it's like, all right, cool, prove that. Why do you believe that? Why? And then yeah. again, how did you rob blah, 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 blah. The, the actual claim is just stupid. If it's if the idea is you you decide to be generally sick and sickness somewhere pops up, that would ultimately be more defensible that you decide to be sick in the brain and then sickness in the brain pops up, because a lot of people don't even find out so, uh, most people don't actually know what the pancreas does. It's become more popular in recent yeah. years, but most people don't live chronically online like I do or watch lots of, you know, medical programs or whatever. Uh, but I mean, even going beyond that, like if you have to believe you're going to get it, then why is one of the most common forms of GI cancer sarcoma, which is in the ilium? Mm. Does anyone know where anyone, anyone, Nicola, have you ever heard of the ilium before this moment? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, most yeah, he, people he have. He says he's in medical school. I, I go to med oh, school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But the average person, most people haven't, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, for and, everybody and, watching at home, the ilium is the last part of your small intestine right before your large intestine. It's, it's where it meets yeah, up with yeah. your cecum. That's your ileocecal junction. Go on. Yeah, I, yeah. So I want the audience to be involved. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That's good. By the way, there's an organ also. Uh, hang, I'm going to mispronounce it. Um, Go on. It's the. Uh, it's not. It's not jujunum. It's. Ah, uh, jujunum. Jujunum. I, yeah, I always say jujunum. I, I have to free, always be reminded it's, it's not <laughs> jujubees, like the candy jujubees. It's jujubees and <laughs> jujunum. Uh, <laughs> For everybody at home, the jejunum is the middle part of your That's small intestine. It goes yeah. your... Yeah. What? I thought it's duodenum for Is duodenum, then jejunum, then ilium? Mm -hmm. I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. You did pronounce yeah, that yeah, thing, yeah. or that thing, by the way. Forrest said, threw out an organ earlier. I don't know why you mispronounced it so bad. It's called C-cum. Um, the C-cum? <laughs> didn't you mention it? <laughs> didn't you mention this the C-cum? By the way, everybody watching at home, the cecum is right where your small intestine connects to your large intestine. Your large intestine is a big tube. There's a little yeah. pouch down at the bottom called your cecum, and down below that pouch, that's where your appendix is, your vermiform appendix. Yeah, and I, so I have intestinal issues. <laughs> hang on, hang on, wait for this, wait for this. Is everybody ready for the joke? 
I have intestinal mm. issues out the ass. And uh, nice. these are all uh-huh. these are all words that are relevant to me and my life and my history, but I didn't know these words until they were relevant. I didn't find out <laughs> about the CCOM until some certain late night Googling's happening. But then the the CCOM I found out about from a doctor. Uh, uh, and so it, it the the I would be very interested with this specific claim more uh, about more of the what than usual than I usually would be on the why because I want I want to really make them describe what they're claiming here because seriously like to say like if you think you're going to get an infection in the brain you're getting an infection in the brain but the brain is so many things it's so many parts it's so many mm-hmm. like even the places you can get infections what are you talking about? Like the the what what specific the whole thing just reeks of stupid. Um, but yeah, it, well, it is it is it's like when you you were, you said you're talking about different parts of the small intestine. The small yeah. intestine is an organ, but then you were saying the ileum versus the jejunum versus the duodenum as different organs, and that's actually reasonable because they have different blood supplies. Like there's different shit exactly. going in different directions in there. You know what I mean? And so like. Yeah, that's if you just say, "Oh, I've got an issue with my, you know, intestine." Which intestine? Which part of different intestine? Even you know the large intestine. It goes in between mesenteric layers. You've got some that are in the front and in the back, and all the like. It's just I don't know, man. Like it's it's really just complex. And to think that I can just sit here and just be like, eh, I don't feel good about myself. Therefore, this is going to be the manifestation." It's it's bizarre. I'm just looking yeah. up obscure organs just for funds now. Somebody <laughs> explain the interstitum to me. Stitium, the interstitium. Anyone know what that is? I, I, I'm going to double I check. Think. It's a newfound organ, it's a, apparently, of, of fluid. A contiguous fluid-filled space existing uh, between a structural barrier such as a stru- cell membrane or skin and internal structures such as organs. So you're just talking wow. about just... The fluid-filled space between shit. I don't really need an explanation. I just hadn't heard of it before. Now, I, I've I've heard this word, but I've never like heard it talked about that way. I guess yeah, yeah. I guess it says a newfound organ in quotation marks here from Scientific American. Neato. <laughs> it's like we we talk a lot in in you know in medicine. We talk a lot about um uh there's potential spaces. So like places where different tissues connect, but it's a solid connection there's nothing in between them but you could theoretically separate them and so it's what we call a potential space in there because like in the case yeah. of like damage or infection you can open up a space there and shit can get real bad like for example right behind your your pharynx which is your your, your throat where your mouth and your nose connect down and go beyond your throat you have a retropharyngeal space where you're you have this area that could potentially open up um i've seen case studies of people who sneeze too hard and ripped the back of their throat off of the fucking you know the the wall that it's attached to and they open up that retropharyngeal space and then that can become infected and then you have an area with not a lot of blood supply they're very difficult to treat you know what i mean <laughs> it's yeah. crazy wow that's that's what this that's what this sounds like to me is, is what you're describing here all right nicola what was the last argument someone gave you uh I, I'm sorry, just someone in the comments said, I like how the only thing Jimmy remembers is Seacom. <laughs> I remember Jimmy. What are they talking about? Oops, I just activated <laughs> sticky keys. God damn it. Uh, we all heard it. So, there, there, there was like, I have, uh, like, in my life, all right, in med school, I, my uh, one teacher, you know, she teaches like uh, microbiology. She is, you know, the. Mm-hmm pseudoscientist, you know, everything, you know. So it, goodness, it's she's an really hard for me to be in the same class as her. You know, yeah. it's like, but yeah, let's go on to the next topic. This is, I think, maybe the last. So in like, uh, I had like, a, it wasn't a debate. It was just, just you know, arguing with someone uh, about astrology, you know. Mm. It was a person of, let's say, experience. She's a nurse. And... I I said there's no logical reason to think there's a connection between, you know, stars, planets, and us, except, you know, we are made from the same stuff. So uh, 
she then, then said, uh, oh, but I remember there was this one night when, you know, no patient was sleeping and everyone at the hospital was saying it, it was because of the like full moon or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to ask you, how would you approach such things? Because I, I, I. Sorry, say the, the last time, part again. What what happened because of a full moon? No patient uh, was sleeping. It's... Like no one wanted to sleep. Okay. Yeah, that's that's very common. Is is pe- people believe that the full I, I moon has that. a. I said that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's common for them not to sleep. They were in pain, and but she was like, no, they weren't. They were like, under, you know. Uh, pain, right. pain medication. Right. The night that the well, night that everyone was awake, that there was a full moon. She remembers it was because of the full moon, and then all the nights where there yeah. wasn't, it was other things. But there were yeah, still. Exactly. Right. How do I, yeah. I? I most of the time I crumble under such you know things when someone brings up a personal experience. You tell her to I call in. Don't know how to you know. <laughs> yeah, tell her to call us. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> the the thing is that's uh that that belief that the full moon has an effect on people and on their behavior, especially around hospitals. I've heard a lot is it's very, very common. It's, it's a superstition. Um, and like Jimmy said, you know, they, it's confirmation bias. They don't think about how people are acting nearly as much every other day of the week. It's when it's a full moon, they're looking for this and then they notice it. And then they, that reinforces their belief. Um, what I would point out with astrology is Number one, you already said there's there's no logical reason to try to link, you know, the motion of the stars and planets to us. And I would dig into that. Ask, okay, what's the mechanism by which this works? Is it the light from those things? Because our sun drowns out that light. That doesn't matter. Is it the gravity from those things? Again, the gravity of just the earth, and if not the earth, the sun dramatically overshadows that. There's no reason to think think that, you know, the, the gravity of Neptune pulling on me right now is significantly less than the gravity of this microphone pulling on me right now. I'm not really worried about what Neptune's gravity is going to do to my body or my... But more importantly, is there a history of astrology making actual, useful, testable predictions about our universe? No, it's quite the opposite. It, it's it's wrong more often than not. Uh, it's right less than chance. It's that right? I was going to have a bad That's day this week. I had seven, okay? So- you know what? That's... That's such a Sagittarius thing for you to say. My God. But <laughs> well, it's, it's, I'm, a on you, I'm a Leo. I'm not actually. <laughs> I like saying I'm the wrong sign. Yes. And then people go, I knew it. And then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, I idiot. Knew you fucking idiot. You, know, you fell yeah. for it. Um, I love, uh, I was see. I saw a person on, on TikTok re- recently. They're a teacher here in America. Which, I don't know, Nicola, if you know, but like the, the education system here in the U S is God awful. Um, and oh, they, yeah, this teacher, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, this teacher had this student that kept turning in assignments that they made through J- chat GPT, and she calls home <laughs> and trying to talk to the parent like, hey, your kid's cheating on every assignment. They're getting straight zeros. What, this is a ser-. And the parent just goes, well, he is an Aquarius, and that was the conversation. And it's like, I now know why your kid thinks it's okay to cheat and get away with everything because of that <laughs> shit right there. I, uh, anyway, yeah, that's that's what I would say. It's just you know, it's th- there's no yeah. reason to believe in this, and even if there was a reason to believe in this, there's no reason to believe in this because it doesn't do anything. What were you saying, Jimmy? Yeah, if you believe in astrology, or that you, especially if you believe, even if astrology isn't true, it's quote unquote harmless. Call in so I can disabuse you of those stupid notions. Yeah. Uh, so, go one, ahead. One last thing before I go, since it's like really uh, late. Here mm-hmm. in Serbia, mm-hmm. uh, when it's day for you, it's night for us. So it's like two a.m. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, the last thing I just wanted to ask both of you, for me and for the audience, for everyone, what are your like two favorite arguments against the Bible? And that's it. I just want to hear it. Sure. Yeah, I would say my favorite one is just that if this is a holy book, so to speak, it's a god awful one. Even if I accept that this God is real and everything in the Bible is real and everything, you know, like it is a terrible book. Not only is it terribly written, but it teaches really, really hideous, evil things. Um, and I would not want to support any religion or any God that actually endorsed that. That's my best argument against the Bible itself, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Mine isn't so much an argument against the Bible, just a sort of general point of, you would not take these people's advice on anything else because you would recognize how antiquated their views were 
and how rooted they were in stupidity. And so the fact mm-hmm. that they believed the weather was the will of God, you wouldn't take their advice on meteorology. <laughs> the fact that they thought disease was the will of God, you wouldn't take their advice on medicine. But why, yeah. when those things intersect specifically on a religious end or somebody you don't like gets sick, suddenly are you like, you know who's smart with them doctor words? Fucking <laughs> shepherds. Modern day yep. shepherds aren't good doctors, right? I'm sure that there's an exception out there that there's some doctor who is a shepherd for a hobby and is probably great at both. But generally, if the only thing you've ever learned to do well is be a shepherd, you're probably an amazing shepherd. And I'd probably enjoy going fishing with you more than a doctor, but uh, you shouldn't be my doctor. Uh, yeah. And the, I, I just find it wild that... It's so obviously ripe for abuse, the Bible, the ripe for being wrong. It's so ripe for those things that people don't at some point in their life go, okay, to avoid being the idiot, I'm going to go ahead and start back from zero, not assume anything in it is true or untrue, and I'm going to build back from zero. It's wild to me that anybody would not, uh, that so many people don't just do that, but it's because they've been obviously been made afraid to do that to if you even allow yourself yeah. to consider yeah, that it's yeah. not true what if you die that moment and you go to hell anyway. yeah, i remember i remember one time like i told uh, some guy if you had to choose between prayer and natural medicine and an epi pen what would you choose and he was like well i trust in god and so i was like Okay, then, okay, I'm done with the, you know, debate. Yes. Then why do we <laughs> have EpiPens? That's why, why do we have yeah. EpiPens? <laughs> and that's when, you throw a, that's when you throw a bee at his face and a peanut down his throat and you call his bluff. Yes, yes. Fucking. <laughs> and you say, pray, pray your motherfucker. <laughs> Let's do this shit. I have the EpiPen. <laughs> All you have to do is reach for it. Right. Like, yeah. The, it's. It's funny because they always say the thing about, like, no atheists in foxholes or, or when you're on your deathbed. Um you're going to, th- then you'll realize and you'll call out for God. Meanwhile, it's kind of like what Republicans do where they accuse everybody of being pedophiles because there's so many pedophiles among them. Meanwhile, it's literally theists who are like, yeah, God heals. God does all this, all this, all this. And then they get a cold and they're like, will you load me up with antibiotics for my virus? <laughs> <sighs> God, people. I'm trying. I'm trying to look up the clip. There was actually a clip of this dude. I, I found the the Christian that he was debating was Jeff Durbin, I think. Um, and there's this guy who challenges. Uh, it looks like Jeff Durbin versus Clark Ellis may have been the guy. He pours a glass of antifreeze and is like, "Drink it." It says in the Bible that if someone of true faith can drink poison and not be harmed. <laughs> I will change my mind right now if you can do this. That would demonstrate your faith. Prove it. And obviously, all the people on the Christian side of the table are like, "Fuck no! This is this is challenging God. This isn't good for me." And what's Will a man really great tempt about that, God? Yes, <laughs> as it does happen in the Bible several times. Um, and uh, the the best part of it was right after that clip ends, after that part of the debate, the atheists and the the Christian guy start talking. And the Christian guy's just being, you know, kind of condescending and shitty, like, this is really just just unbecoming and just bad faith argument from you. It's just terrible. I I just think you're very rude. And they're just having a conversation. And some other dude comes and like butts up into him and is like, show some respect when this man's <laughs> talking to you. It's just like, like they get so fucking fired up because this dude's like, do the thing. If you said you can do the thing, do the thing. Let's see it. Let's do it yeah. right now. I don't let oh, other people great. define to me what respect is. That shit annoys the fuck out of me. Yeah. Nico, we're going to move time. on there, bud. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, we had a laugh. Sorry, yeah. Jimmy, for hurting your feelings. It's all good. Nothing personal. It's <laughs> all good. I knew it was coming because you started the show by saying, first of all, I want to say I love Forrest, and then you never had a second of all. There no, I love you too. I love no, you too. Nicola, it's too late. It's too the late. The damage is <laughs> done. Biologist, right. I hope to work with Forrest one day, really, you know. Yeah. It will right. be a pleasure. Well, thanks, well, man. Don't, yeah, that's very kind of you. Don't send your emails through contact at QA line.com because I'm gonna make sure they get lost, you asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, see you, buddy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nicola. What All a right, fucking this, nice dude. 
at this point, great. at this point, I have to believe that theists are liars and cowards because uh, forty something of you, almost forty five, have said that you believe in God and that you will call in about it. None of you have, except for the same person who's gotten a block twenty two times because we don't let people just call in and yell the n word. Um, and it's pretty sad to me to see that uh, again. If you believe in uh, any religion, spirituality, supernatural, whatever else. Otherwise, we're going to end the show earlier today. Then we'll we'll take a couple more. But uh, people, you're there. We're here. Today's the day. Call in. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm having a sad. I'm I'm sad about the no. Uh, obviously, we've had argumentative calls so far. Mm. One in particular that sticks out. But uh, I'm here to talk to religious people about. Uh, their religion. Now, somebody had called in with a topic I, I that I actually, actually think thought about. was very good. So I actually had to think about what you were talking about when you said we had one argumentative call. Nicola was so fucking pleasant. I had completely forgotten about the man who got an astrophysics degree from the Marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. How dare you? How oh, no, dare pardon you? me. He, he got a political science degree in astrophysics. He has a astrophysics. political science degree. Which required, by the way, does not require, there is not, I, it, maybe you could say if you the, go to the right school that there is an elective. There might be that's a what I was, I was gonna physics. Say, he, the man described electics, <laughs> electives to us. Like, oh God. Right. There might be a physics requirement, though I don't even think that. I think if you do a political science thing, you're expected to take chem one and two, and then I think you're expected to take bio. Hold on. Hold on. I'll look, because I've got, uh... Not O-Chem, um, just Chem, I think it's Chem 1 and 2, Bio, and then a science of your choice, a science credit of your choice, I think is uh, uh, the, the requirements at most Here's schools. Here's political science. So I'm just looking up here, um, request info, learning outcomes requirements. Here's degree requirements. So this is Tulsa Community College. I live in Tulsa. This is our community college here. Um, uh, requirements for uh, political science degree. I'm just looking. You need uh, seven hours of general education in any science. One must be a laboratory science. So one lab and then, which would count for probably one hour. Um, so you need two classes. Well, you but then two... there's going to be the class attached to the lab class because you rarely take the lab in isolation at, in freshman. And no, no, no. The, the way they usually do it at this one anyway, because is, is this is where I started out. The way they usually do it is it's like a three hour course plus right. one lab one lab, as right. a, and so it's, a, it's a yeah. four so it's yeah yeah so basically more so than half need, would be taken if you took chem or bio with lab would take more than half of those yeah. and then you take one other and one then other you're an non -lab science course yeah that's how it is that's how it works seven hours seven credit hours of of, of of half lab science i've been so <laughs> impressed when i meet a actual astrophysicists and 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 like and now i realize it's fucking easy. Anybody could do it. It's like fucking. You know what a, I I realized? I didn't know astrophysicists never, were the chiropractors of the science world. I've ne nice. I've never heard Neil deGrasse Tyson explain the sun. Therefore, I don't think he knows anything. It's Has what it he is. even mentioned the sun? Honestly, he's always talking never, about Pluto. Never in his whole life. Fucking, yeah. yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson is scared of me because he knows I'm smarter than him. Uh, that's what it is because you know what the sun is <laughs> somebody's somebody in the comments is gonna be like jim i can't believe jimmy really thinks that i do he's, <laughs> he won't call in because he's scared uh alan in michigan <laughs> you're on the line with jimmy and forrest hey, <laughs> to, sorry i love in the chat someone just put one credit equals one degree <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's that's right. i'm sorry for <laughs> Go ahead, Alan. Right, go on, Alan. What's going yeah, on? I'll, I'll just, you know, I can confirm. I, I, I majored in history. I mean, took three science classes mm -hmm. with one lab. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Yep. And now, and now you're all of those sciences. You are those things. Yes. I, yeah. I'm a complete expert: geology, astrology, uh, astronomy. Mm -hmm. um, see, what else did I take? Environmental science. Yeah. I'm a. Yeah. I, if, you know, if you have to well think have about a, it, that means you're things. more of an expert. <laughs> Well, I did TA for the history of science once, which was brilliant. I, I took loved a fencing. It. I took a fencing PE. I'm ready to go to the Olympics. Anyway, go ahead, <laughs> Alan. What's your uh, what's your question? Okay, so um, 
the question is, okay, the, the theist will say if, according to atheism, if the result of, of life, planet, everything is just random processes, what's the basis of your morality? And mm -hmm. I can answer the morality part based on cultural studies, but I don't have an answer as to why those processes aren't random. So the Forrest is with, on. That's why I'm calling today. Uh, well, I'm as yeah, much yeah, as yeah. a physicist as Forrest, so I'm also going to answer. Uh, right. <laughs> it's fucking, true. But, uh, Alan, uh, I'd start with the stupid foundation they apparently are beginning it with. That is not according to atheism. Atheism yes, I understand that. Doesn't have yeah, and that's exactly where I'd begin. And and I'd point out like you foundationally don't understand the thing you are opposing to, because you're saying okay. according to something that has no opinion on it. There is no atheist mm. position on randomness or whatever else. Right. The right. word random is also a red herring. Basically, it's it, mm -hmm. they're not using it. The word random in evolution is probably the least random process one can imagine. And yet, because right. there's so many factors at play and, and life has such variety to it, there's an appearance of randomness. But natural selection is totally non-random. It doesn't mean that it's directed by a person, but it makes complete right. sense. And that actually is true of a lot of concepts in physics. I was researching this last week because somebody brought up, wow, why is the Fibonacci sequence so present everywhere? And it turns out because it's efficient. So the things that win are in, in all of science are the things which are the most efficient, which made my autistic little brain so fucking happy. Uh, hmm. But like literally that's, that's the fucking it of it all. So as far as like, are we a process of things that to our eyes are extremely unlikely? Sure, but it, mm -hmm. first of all, random suggests it. It's funny because if you put a bunch of factors together, like here's what you would need to have this and this and this and this, and so you say the odds of life. You would here are the things you need for life. So the odds of life, because in the universe, how often does this? It, are these things all lined up? Are one in some incredible number, but the odds of life in our solar system are 100 percent right not whatever the universe's potential is our you our solar system it's 100 fucking percent odds of life now we still haven't built all of the reasons why and everything but life is here and so and, mm -hmm. and every step of the way we're finding that like oh this the the reduction of specifically our solar system getting closer to what we know is 100 percent you can point to this, you can point to that, you can point to that. So the whole, the, the, but yeah, the word random is, is they're using it in a silly way, but even if it was random, who the fuck cares? <laughs> like make them put a number on it. If point. they can, I can come up with a random number. I can hand mm -hmm. write a random number as random as whatever odds they come up with. And usually they come up with a number that's not that crazy. And that's the thing that I also think is fucking nuts where you're like, one in a quadrillion? That's it? The size of this universe? And you think one in a quadrillion is large? I can write a random number that is that that represents a quadrillion digits. Or not a quadrillion digits, but right. a, th that is a that is in the right. quadrillions. And it's therefore if I write that number, what is that? Uh 912. Is that 15 digits is quadrillions? If I write fifth, any random 15 digits, the odds of me picking that number are one in that same quadrillion. And now I've done right. it. It's on the paper. And I don't need God to show up to make the paper blessed or whatever the fuck else. The whole thing, anyway, I don't know. I just went on like three different rants. The whole thing's just okay, that's stupid fine. pretends. Yeah, the, the thing that I would say is that like, Number one, you know, Jimmy already mentioned the fact that, you know, natural selection, because usually that's what it boils down to. If we're just animals that are random, blah, 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 um, right. like that's natural selection is the non random selection of random mutation. So it's not, it is not a, a random process. But even ignoring that, like what the question fundamentally boils down to is where does morality come from? Actually, and if it, it doesn't course, come from a, sorry. Even there, what you just said. The word random 
Mm-hmm. Mutation does not mean, am I wrong or right? Does not mean the way this person is using the word random. We may not to, yet to, to understand say why the mutation expo- pops up, but it's not mm-hmm. true randomness. It's yeah, it's it's not like it's yeah, it's that's what I want. That's what I'm trying to get to. I know it's not right. Yeah, yeah. There has to be certain chem- chemical processes happening, etc., or it won't happen. Mm-hmm. So obviously, it's not random. Yeah. But but even like right. what I'm saying is in in fairness to the question, what the question seems okay. to really be driving at is that if there's no official arbiter of morality, if if morality truly is you know uh, uh, something that that is disconnected from any objective truth and is just a thing that we do, and what's what's the point of it? Why does it matter? And all these things, like I can actually answer that um, because what they're describing there is nihilism. The, this idea that like and there's different kinds of nihilism and it, it's you know there's there's the nihilism where like nothing exists at all there's the nihilism of like you know society and language are are made up and they that's so like you have like these different kinds me i'm a nihilist my i i i'm interested in existential nihilism and cosmic nihilism and cosmic nihilism is specifically what's what's involved here um which is to say the universe is so goddamn big and so goddamn crazy, and there's all this, what you could, I guess, use the term colloquially, randomness everywhere, all around Mm -hmm. us all the time. Um, If the entire planet was destroyed, nothing's going to change in the Sombrero Galaxy. Nobody gives a fuck over there if every person on Earth dies at the same time in the most horrific way possible. Nothing changes in the Sombrero Galaxy. So, like, Right. Nothing matters whatsoever. There is no such thing as objective truth, morality, or not as truth, pardon me, objective morality or meaning. I meant when I said truth, I was meaning like meaning. No, uh, um, uh, yeah, there, there's no, I, I know someone's going to clip that and say, you admit that nothing's true. Um, there's none of that. Law, <laughs> justice, love, uh, 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 affection, compassion, marriage, all of the, the, the beautiful th- food, all of the things in our society that we like, music and art and, and, and culture and religion and, 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 and compassion and all these beautiful things, they're all constructs that we made up from the shit that was around us or from just ourselves to help us deal with the universe that we're living in. And that's fucking fine. So to take right. all of this in the, the, the vein that the question seems to be driven um, the, the question seems to be directed at if this has no real bearing in, in some objective standard of some guy up there counting you know every hair on everybody's head, then what does it matter? It fucking doesn't. It matters as mm. much as we make it matter. I know that I'm not the only person in the room that can think. I know what it feels like to be sad. I know what it feels like to be mm. hurt. I know what it feels like to be heartbroken. I know what it feels like to not be able to get off the floor because the world fucking sucks so bad and everything's been taken away from mm. you. And it's just, I I know how much that sucks. And I don't want anybody else to feel that way because I care about them because I do. Like the right. the, the, the idea that, I, I can sit here and say honestly that I don't believe in any punishment and I don't believe in any reward in, in any other life. There may be a punishment or reward here, but like I don't believe mm-hmm. in an afterlife. Therefore, I don't think that I'm going to be rewarded or punished. People would then ar- argue, well, then why don't you do all these terrible things? Why don't you rape and murder as many people as you want? And I would go to the Penn Jillette line. I do. Right. And I don't want to rape or murder yeah. anybody because that's an evil thing to do. It's terrible. There, there's no consequence there's no rules. You get to decide what kind of person you are. Are you going to be a dick or not? I would like to not be. It seems to make everybody else right. around me happier. I know what it feels like to have somebody be a dick to me, and I don't want to be that to somebody else. And I know what it, we could do as a species. We could achieve really great, cool things if we're kind to each other, and if we work really hard together, and if we do the right thing as, as best as we can define whatever the hell the right thing is. I don't want to stand in the mm-hmm. way of that. I would like a world without starvation and without undue suffering and without, you know, slavery and without misery and without torture. And I would like to make a world like that. It seems pretty fucking nice. I want to live there selfishly. I I can say I want to live there. Absolutely. So, so yeah, just let's, Cool. Like that that's that's it that's the basis of it if, if someone's asking why does morality matter if i hit you right now does it matter yeah, yeah. 
it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but like, sure, right now it matters. So let's, let's we we'll try to do it right. properly. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I can explain the morality part. I mean, I yeah. studied history. It's like not hard to figure that part out, but I, uh, now I think I can answer the science side of that question, which is mm -hmm. what I was asking about because cool. I need to, I know it's not random because, well, I just, I, yeah, I'm not a science guy. I can't really explain it, but I do know it's not random the way they mean, and I just don't have the the tools or the language. So the the way I would you. put it in a, in a yeah, I really like um I really like fables and shit. I, I grew up with a lot of fables and stories and things to teach moral lessons. And okay. like one of my favorite ones about this specically was I'll be very brief about it. Is there's a kid walking down the beach He'll try. and picking up all the starfishes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The, st the, yeah. the tide washes starfish up on the beach and the kid picks up the starfish and throws them back in the water. And some guy comes over and says, why are you wasting your time? It's so stupid. You know, these the tide's going to come right back in in 12 hours. It's going to wash more of them up on the beach. You know, it doesn't matter how much you do this. There's always going to be dead starfish. Don't you understand mm -hmm. what you're doing doesn't matter. And the kid picks up one more starfish, throws it in the, be in the water and says, it matters to that one. And that's how I feel now. I have, I have, you know, average right. human lifespan in this country is maybe 80 or so years if you're lucky. I'm 31. So I've already used up almost mm -hmm. half of the time that I've got. I've got a huge amount of work to do in a very little bit of time. I got a whole fucking world to save. I, I need to be working really hard at it. And I, every minute that I spend doing it is a, is a minute that I don't get back. I don't think that there's anything asked for this. I am sacrificing the little right. bit of life that I have to try to make the world a little bit less shitty. And I think if we all did that, then there wouldn't have to be as much sacrifice to make the world less shitty. We, we could all just do it a little bit, you know? Yeah. Well, many hands make the load lighter kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's just, that's none of this is an argument against yeah. um, atheism or morality or secular morality or anything. It just, yeah. it's trying to take the responsibility away from people. And I think that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, I you mean, have I, the responsibility I, to be a good person. Well, I'm, Last thoughts. There, I'm, Alan. I'm twice your I'm twice your age. I became an atheist three years ago. I mean, congratulations. Cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Finally figured it out. Hell yeah! Well, <laughs> all in their own time, I'm sure. Thank you, Alan. Anything else before we yep. let you go? Final words there. No, no that's well. I did want to say just yep, one idea that quickly, um, please. Humans, people talk about, oh, well, if, if humanity died out, they talk about everything that would be lost. Yeah. The problem mm -hmm. is everything that would be lost only matters to humans. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, so if we were gone, it doesn't matter that we created the Sistine Chapel or the pyramids or the tower in Toronto or whatever, uh, because we're gone. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no argument there. Anyway, sure. that's it. Cool. Thank you very much for taking my call. It was very helpful. We'll see it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. By the way, Jimmy, I I just looked at my phone and got your text that you sent the the VMix. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that I emailed you the link before the show? That you did to uh, log in. Yeah. yeah I yeah. my phone I moved and my phone buzzed in my pocket. I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? It's it's you. From hours ago, <laughs> I was sitting there during your long thing there, where I was like, "Oh, come on, man, rap," because I want this. I want to do this call so bad. I want to do this call so bad. So now I we're didn't doing this see call it so on bad. there until last just now. Abel in in Florida, Abel, you're on the line with Jimmy and Forrest. How are you, Abel? Hello, doing well. How are you doing, Forrest just and fine. Jimmy? How are you guys doing today? I'm sleepy, but other than that, really I'm good. fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've never had a bad day. <laughs> oh man sorry to hear that maybe i can make your day a little better and brighter oh he said never had a bad day i think you misheard yeah, him i've never had a bad day in my life oh. yeah it's oh it's almost okay. certainly untrue but he says it just to piss me off i think anyway Abel, go <laughs> ahead what's your uh what's your what do you propose here yeah so i've got a little uh uh a point that i'd like to make maybe you guys could think about it and talk to me about sure. it uh, I'm sitting, I'm going to propose that the proof that God exists is that without God, you couldn't know anything. So, so you've changed this, from this what sounds you, like something we've on. heard. A, yeah. Yeah. Right, it, yeah we've it. heard this one, but you've changed from what you told the screener. Are you not wanting to, uh, do you not want to, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll get, yeah. I'll get into that. So atheism has no 
foundation, primary metaphysical, if you will, foundation for knowledge. But Christianity does. Therefore, the Christian God is more valid. Okay. Is it um, more sound? And this is, it would be more sound. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, I, you mean sound I as might, in I, proving if the you want to say it actually it, exists? If you want to say that it's more valid, it, that a syllogism which says Christianity has Christianity in it is more easy to make a syllogism based on Christianity for a metaphysical foundation, which we haven't even demonstrated is necessary. But if you want to say, I can create a syllogism that is more valid with Christianity uh, than I can on atheism regarding the existence of a metaphysical foundation, I would almost say, duh, because how could atheism have a metaphysical foundation? Atheists might have a metaphysical foundation, but that's like saying ice cream doesn't have a medical f- metaphysical foundation. Therefore, uh, uh, Christianity is a more valid argument for a metaphysical foundation for uh, uh, than ice cream. Sure, but it, is it more sound? Does the syllogism survive scrutiny, and is does it actually it does it actually bear out? To which I would say, no, neither do. Ne- but atheism is doesn't propose a metaphysical foundation. Atheism is simply I don't believe in God. Hmm. I I understand. Um. So yeah, that I would agree with you that um, this is an argument, not necessarily an evidential argument. So I'm not going to be able to present God for you. But should like, I'm you, not going to be able Abel, to should you put believe, him on the phone. Should you accept something because it's more valid or because it is sound? You you can accept um, both. No, you know you if, should if, not. If, if, you should not yeah. accept both. You should not accept until you meet soundness. You can create absolutely nonsense. No, you said on both. Valid is not. Yes. Valid is, yes. you can create nonsense valid syllogisms, complete nonsense ones. It isn't until mm-hmm. you reach soundness that you should accept them or believe them or even suspect them. Right. But I, I guess what I'm saying is a person could believe something based on sound evidence. Right? But we're you not talking about coulds. We were talking about shoulds. A person could believe on nothing. A person could believe uh, only in the syllogisms which are presented to them that happen to line up with times they needed to fart. A person can believe anything for any reason, but we're talking about shoulds, and that's why I asked. Oh, should. should. Um, so you're saying um, it, it, ought they believe certain things because of either soundness well, or validity? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's kind of... That's what should would mean, sure. Okay, well, that gets into the is-ought problem. Um, it's no, pretty that's simple. No, forward. you're trying to make it more complicated than it is. It's pretty simple. There's the famous one that I pulled up just to make sure I got it right. Here's the argument. All mammals are warm-blooded. All black dogs are mammals. Conclusion, therefore, all black dogs are warm-blooded. That one turns out to be sound under investigation. But you can have unsound, valid syllogisms. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. I've got one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Daffy Duck is a duck. Ducks are real. Therefore, Daffy Duck is real. Right. Is that a sound? That's a valid argument. But is it sound? Valid. It's valid, but not sound. Correct. Right. Right. So what Jimmy's asking you is, if you want to make the claim that theism has a metaphysical foundation and therefore it's more real... You you are making a valid argument because atheism has no medical physical foundation, but it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. It's not a sound argument. So why do we care and why do you believe it and why are you presenting it? Well, the problem is because if the atheism worldview were true, you what? couldn't know anything. What? What, what is the atheism yeah. worldview? No God. The atheism worldview is not no God. Right. The, to the, even well, use no 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 no. Atheism, no. What do you mean, you, right? You, you explain just, it. I don't want to. I don't want to define your beliefs, of course. What do you, you go right ahead? Okay, wait, wait. Let's get some of your definitions. What is the definition of worldview when you're using it? Um, it's it's 
it's it's a, a view of reality. It's the way that you view reality from the okay. Top to the so bottom. you're not even using it. You're you're calling in for for a sort of theistic discussion, and you're and you're using these words that are used in theological discussions, but you're not even using them in their typical theological sense, which is fine. But this is why we have to define them. It's kind of like when somebody right. calls in and they're like. Jimmy, you have faith in science. And we're like, we're having a theological discussion. So surely you understand that I don't have religious faith in science. I have confidence, but Christian religious right. faith, the Hebrews 11.1, 1, is not the same thing. A worldview, generally, and when you're going to call into a show like this, we have to interrupt to make sure that people know, generally a worldview is actually like a philosophy, uh, a, a, a world conception. Uh, it, it almost gets into some of the things like you're talking about metaphysical foundations. Atheism mm -hmm. is the answer to one question. It is as much a worldview as ice cream is, legitimately. Gotcha. Do you believe there is a God? No. Do you believe there are no gods? Some atheists believe there are no gods. Some don't know. Some will just say, I don't know. I, I don't hold the belief that there are no gods. Some people will just say no. But if you don't hold the belief, so my worldview, my personal philosophy, I'm a secular humanist. I'm, 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 that's not atheism though. That is something completely separate from atheism. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be that it is easier to be. There are secular humanists actually who are religious privately, but as far as their personal philosophy goes, they don't, uh, uh, they don't let their religion influence their, their worldview. Uh, they just have this belief in God. There's nothing, there's no secular humanist meetups where he goes, okay, everybody here who's agreeing that we treat each other well because that's what we should do, who are prioritizing well-being, all this sort of thing. Uh, everyone rejects God, right? Otherwise, leave. That's not, the pro that's not a, a thing you need to do to be unified with secular humanists. So I'm going to let you start okay. again because there is no atheist worldview. What is it you are calling to propose? Okay. So I would say that, um, well, I could ask you, maybe I can ask form it in a question to kind of illustrate what I'm getting at. What is the one thing you know, and how would you know it? How do you know it? What, would, what is your definition of no? Because we've actually gotten to the point where I have to have things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no is to be, to be acquainted, to know, to actually understand something, to um, conceptually understand something. Um, All right. So let me ask you this, example, Abel. Let's say, I, let's say I know that my uh, jacket is blue. Would you consider that knowledge if we are living in a simulation? I'm not saying we're living in a simulation. I don't believe we're living in a simulation. But if we're living in a simulation and I say I know that my jacket is blue, have I just made a false statement by saying I know? You could have in that case. Then, that then case, there's no point have. because what you're suggesting is that hard solipsism is so, – is, is, solved by Christianity, this is what's implied, but not solved by other uh, uh, worldviews or, or isn't, no. it wouldn't be in an atheist. Because to me, even if we're in a simulation, this factually for what we within the simulation have defined as blue is blue. And I would consider mm -hmm. this knowledge. Knowledge to me is just the highest belief confidence. It's to just say, I believe in, can imply uh, not an adequate amount of verification when you're going to go with, I know it is basically the highest form of confidence, but it is really just an, I believe plus statement, but that it is a mm -hmm. much more highly justified belief. Uh, so, so with you and I, I don't think we can agree on the foundations here because neither of us have anything that can solve solipsism, uh, even your metaphysical foundation period. We simply can't, uh, and to me, this jacket is blue, regardless of if that is solved or not, whether we are brains and vats or not. It's a blue jacket. So what do you appeal to to know that? That my jacket is blue? Correct. Observation and then verification. So your senses are reasoning, nope. right? Then your, observation, so senses... then verification. Okay, I can, observation. I what start. Do you use I can start with senses. I can start with senses in this case. However, I don't necessarily right. need to. 
I could also take a picture of the jacket and then take it into a digital color wheel and give you not just w if it's blue, I can give you which blue it is down to a hexadecimal that is uh, uh, far beyond. In fact, there's so many, it's kind of crazy that we call so many things blue. Uh, mm -hmm. But I could start with senses just, and then I'm going to do me. very... I'm another yeah. thinking agent. Yeah, I can look at your jacket. Yeah. Yes. Observation, then verification. Right. And both of you guys are using what to, to appeal to. When you read this instrument that gives you the shades or the colors, you know, beyond just. Again, your you just said you that said you, you don't can... have. You just said, when I brought up the point about solipsism, you were saying you weren't suggesting that. When this is what you are now once again trying to do. No, no, no. no I am using no, the same thing Ask everyone, me. everyone. Ask me. Abel, I am using the same Ask thing that you are using to verify anything that you're doing in a day. Right. The right. only we things we all same. seem to have, and I don't even know that you exist, but in as much as it seems that all the evidence points that way, I will claim it as knowledge, though I, Abel, you, I know less than, than Forrest, certainly I've met Forrest in person, for all I know you're in, you know, a chat GPT bot. Uh, sent to be right. a bit pedantic about philosophical terms that are ill-defined. Uh, but but I don't know. I don't know you. <laughs> right. Uh, there you go. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So there you, I go. You admit, you admit that you don't know things. I admit no one knows anything to a degree of for sure the universe exists. But I already said mm -hmm. I use the term no to mean an extremely highly justified confidence in a proposition i already said it's basically i believe plus to the maximum yeah the way i like it said right. is, so, is it's a belief that it would be absurd not to take so like if it at you know belief is just thinking a thing is true but if you get that belief to a level where it would actually be absurd for you not to believe that thing anymore like for example i'm sitting in my office talking to a camera right now I would have to be crazy to not think that that was true. It would be an absurd thing to not believe. At the end of the day, it is just still my observation, my senses. I can ask Jimmy, does this look like my usual bookshelf? I can take a picture and compare it to an old picture. I can do all the usual things, but that's that's all it is. It's just the same kind of thinking. Right. So that's where I'm coming at with God, the absurdity to the contrary. If you don't have... A absolute metaphysical primary referent to know what's possible and impossible, then every truth claim that you state or make is arbitrary and meaningless. Whereas what I'm founding my knowledge on is something absolute and um, great. Abel, you are you are in a simulation primary. and you're programmed to believe that. Fix that. Solve that now. I'm sorry, say that again. You're in a simulation. You were programmed to believe that even though it's untrue. Solve that. Oh, it, I, I could never solve it in that Right. Case, so right. this is the point about when we right. talked about you can make a valid syllogism, but not a sound one. You haven't demonstrated the need for a metaphysical foundation, and you haven't demonstrated, therefore, if you have to have a metaphysical foundation, not being able to identify it yet, or it being in a concept that's so abstract that it's perhaps unidentifiable, if that is the reality, being able to put words to a simpler concept that is fucking nursery level is not more sound and more reasonable to take on as the explanation. You're basically proposing an answer is better than no answer, or an answer is better than a super abstract complex answer if we haven't defined that answer yet. That's that's the way you well, want to live, it's, Abel. It's 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 a competition of worldviews. So if you're in, and when I say, and again, I know you don't want to say that atheism is a worldview. Let's say, uh, are you a, are you a materialist or a naturalist? I already example? told you I'm a secular humanist. Do you need another humanist. one? Um, something that relates to what we're talking about. But I feel secular like you're humanism. wanting to you're wanting to specifically box me into things that again. You, like you just said, it, it's a competition of worldviews where right. you think there has to be a winner. And this is the problem with your thought because there doesn't Why? have to be a winner. And sometimes Why? it's better to not crown a winner than crown the wrong winner. And so you're basically sitting there going, 
you know, it's it's the election time. You just have the two choices, but we actually do have a third choice, and that none of these well, represent a solution to again the thing the thing that you are constantly pretending your worldview solves is solipsism, which it doesn't. So, I guess I'm I'm a little bit confused. So you made a claim here. Um, there there. The, it's a competition of worldviews. You say it shouldn't be. Why? Why shouldn't it be? I didn't say it because shouldn't be a this... competition of worldviews. I'm saying it shouldn't have a winner amongst only the options presented. Oh, yeah, I, I would say so that, say that there's the, another the way that it, Okay. Go ahead, Forrest. Yeah, I would say that the competition you are putting forward shouldn't happen. I don't know about whether or not it should or shouldn't be a competition of worldviews, but like the way that you're presenting it so far certainly doesn't do anything for me. And I can give you a different example is like, you know, Jimmy put out the problem of hard solipsism. I would ask, you know, your, your whole thing here is like, how do you know anything? How do I know that I'm in my office? How does Jimmy know that his jacket's blue? At the end of the day, we're falling back onto our own senses. And even if we try to verify them, we are, we are sensing the verification through our senses. Yeah. And therefore we don't, how, how do you sense that uh, God is real? Well, see, the problem is that through though, you're using senses and reasoning. You're using that senses and reasoning in the entire process, even when you're using repeated testing or other ways to How, measure or answer I, for I, I understand what your I understand what your argument question. is. I'm asking you, how do you know that God is real? I've talked to God. I've seen God. He's and how he's did how did you talk himself. to God? How did you how did you gain the information that you're talking to God? How did that come to you? Uh, the same way that you discern the color blue. There's, so through your senses. So how can you know through it's real senses. if it's through wait, your senses? Wait, wait, wait. I want a clarification. Because Abel, I'm you're suggesting... You Abel, that, Abel, um, Abel, you uh, are suggesting wait. that you took in, through sensory input, a very real physical God mm -hmm. speaking to him, what, face-to-face? -face? That you spoke face-to-face -to, -face to a God and and heard him audibly what are you de describe audibly. the experience sp specifically particularly well i mean you know not to go into waste too much time with it but yeah through the senses i've seen hear feel things witnesses around me that saw felt seen the same thing I don't expect you to believe that. That's so, why I don't even so care to bring that so up. observation but, but, and what, verification what, what, the, the deeper one one second. So the deeper thing that I'm that I'm really driving at here is that while you are saying that your senses are unreliable, I'm saying that your senses are not unreliable. They're they're giving you the truth, and they're giving you the truth because God gave you the truth through. Hey, well, your senses being unreliable is a scientific fact. It is established. That's, that's called. This is that's, why that's the we, problem of what we call naive realism. Yeah, it's a whole it's, thing that you learn. It's why verification is so important. And as far as your, I don't expect you to believe, I will give a person the benefit of belief of the details of their, ex of their experience, not the explanation of it. I'll sit right. here, Abel, mm -hmm. and go, I will presume that you saw a person, a thing claiming to be God, and that you heard its voice, and that it had some message for you. Apparently not. It didn't solve the Goldbach conjecture for you. That'd be, that'd be fucking phenomenal. But it, it had some message for you. And then I'm going to sit here and go, how many establishments of false prophets and people who thought they were talking to God, but weren't, have we had tons of examples? How many have we of hallucinatory psychological disorders, including ones where people in the surrounding area, because they weren't uh, sort of understanding that that was the problem, like cult leaders who were revealed later to be schizophrenic, uh, were even affirmed by the people surrounding them for a level of acceptance. How many examples of that do we have? How many examples do we have of miracles that are impossible that lots of people say they saw, but a group of thousands of people who were also there didn't, and so then they have the religious rewrite of, well, the people who believed saw, and the people who didn't need to see didn't see, and then some people who believed didn't see because God's testing their faith, blah, blah, blah. Example after example after example after example of natural explanations for people who believed very firmly that they had these experiences that didn't. And Abel, you want to call and tell me that 
there's something wrong because I don't have a metaphysical foundation when you haven't established that one, I don't, or two, that I need one for uh, knowledge and truth. When meanwhile, you hold a belief of a real physical experience with a God, despite the overwhelming evidence the overwhelming number of examples where that has not been the case, whether it's psychological, whether it's some uh, uh, religious uh, group thing sort of thing, whether it's it's a person having a uh, psychotic episode, whatever, all of those, and you don't eliminate, you haven't eliminated any of those, but you're just going for, it was God and it was the real deal. It was the guy. I got to tell you, yep. it's hard to hear a person call in with such a lecture for me when they seem to have failed such basic le levels of uh, self-observation themselves? Well, you know, I, when we saw that experience, I'll, I'll go into it a when little bit. When you saw. You no, know, we did. No, you. Yeah, when I saw it. I, yeah, correct. When I, right. When I, when I see um, Speak to God, saw God, first thing I thought was, I'm crazy. I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I got myself checked out. You know, um, the good thing, the really good thing about that is that I'm not crazy. I'm actually very intelligent. I'm actually very. Um, do you know words? All the reality. best words. I'm sorry. But the, what test did they the do point. to eliminate the possibility? So it's funny because you had you had tried to use the words we at the beginning, and yet yes, some. Yes, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Somehow, you're also revealing in the story that that level of verification of the other people wasn't sufficient for you, so you did go get psychologically tested. So it actually wasn't good enough Correct. for you, so it shouldn't be good enough for me either, the, the, the level of it being other people. Great, we're on the same page so far. Then you went and got, which psychological test is it that eliminates the possibility that you had a hallucination? That eliminated the 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 uh, hallucination was the fact that I didn't have any brain damage or anything abnormal in my. I'm psychological, sorry, that wasn't um, the question. I asked problem. which test eliminated the possibility of hallucination because surely, as a person who is confident that that's been done, you must know that that is impossible, that it is not possible. There is no test at present to eliminate the possibility that a person has had an hallucination in the past, that hallucinations do not only happen amongst the brain damage, that there are completely, uh, uh, seemingly arbitrary instances of hallucinations. There are people who have single one-off hallucinations once in their life, not even about God, about whatever, and then never again. There are people who don't realize they've interacted with a chemical or that they actually have a hallucinogenic allergenic, sorry, hallucinogenic allergic reaction to something, but by not even know, taking it again. So again, which test did you do to eliminate the possibility of the hallucination, the thing you have already admitted you suspected first? Well, what I took was the pareidolia test for one thing. Um, so we're not going to answer my are, question. You know that no, it's... the pareidolia test was a, is, a, is, a, is a, they call it what, the DLB um, test? Uh, also the Alzheimer's, I checked for that. Right. So you checked um, for specific 20, things. There's over, are you going to address like what I said? Healthy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to get it out. So did you actually hear what I'm trying to say? You're trying to get out answers, not to my question. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to, you eliminated but it's kind of hard types because you're of hallucinogen. Yes, because we're wasting time because you're saying. No, you asked me a question. You asked me what it's like test I, I took and I told it's you. Like I asked you the how pareidolia you, test. I, it's like I asked you, how did you eliminate that the car, that there was a car on your street? And you said, I checked for Chevys and there were no Chevys. And I checked for Cadillacs and there were no Cadillacs. And I checked for, and you're telling me about all the types of cars you checked for, but there's a huge number of types of cars that one, you didn't check for, and two, you literally cannot check for. The true you're answer. You're telling a lie. The you're, honest, you're, you're telling, no, I am not. Dishonest. The honest do you answer. Know what the do you the know what? The honest answer to your question is there is. I have not absolutely eliminated the possibility of a hallucination because that would be impossible to do. I no, muted you for impossible. that part since you were trying to talk to me. Not, Im 
Not impossible. Yes, I'm it is. I'm trying to tell you. There's, yes, there's it a is. test called the Pareidolia I, test. I know about the Pareidolia test. To right. And that's one and it of the eliminated the Cadillacs. I'm sorry. Say it again. And it eliminated the Cadillacs. No, no. I mean, I understand what you're, I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you can't eliminate every single episodic um, situation. Including common ones. There are common sources yes, of hallucinations right, that you cannot that you cannot test for. Sometimes right, when you test, but, if you do it quick enough, you can see it. Sometimes it's literally a matter of timing and whether or not they realize they need to do a brain scan in the amount of time that they need to. So also your proximity to the event does matter. And unless I'm mistaken, I think the pareidolia test suffers such a limitation. The pareidolia also is, that's for how you try to figure out whether or not something was Parkinson's related, specifically, right. correct? I thought it was correct. dementia. That is thought correct. It was it's a neuropsychological thing. It's, it's visual hallucination-like illusions. Great. So you eliminated nature. Parkinson's. How did you eliminate an allergic reaction that caused a, hallucinogen, a, a, halluc a hallucination? How did you do that? Um, I didn't have any drugs in my system. I didn't ask time. if you had drugs, drugs in your system. I don't take Anything like that. How do you I didn't know? ask how if you had drugs in your system. Drink. How do you know somebody didn't spike a drink? How did you rule that out? Um, how did I? Well, I, I mean, here's the thing. Um, sure, you can, I can't rule everything Thank out you. for satisfaction. Oh exactly. Jesus. I'm sure. Thank yeah, but, you. You but cannot rule out the same basis everything. upon which we know many things weren't, didn't happen. Oh. The same but thing that consistent? we have lots But are you consistent? Yes. Are you consistent? Yes, because I'm if you are, able. Yeah, so, hang on. You asked a question. I'm going to mute you since you're not going to let me. Yes, I am consistent, Abel, because I have not said you didn't meet God. I have not said this didn't happen. All I have asked was whether or not you have eliminated these other possibilities. You defiantly said yes, 100%, and then we had to do fucking surgery on a grape to get you to <laughs> finally admit that you hadn't. You might have met God. I doubt it. I'd, I've never seen a a. a, a even a possibility of God demonstrated. So I doubt it because the number of examples of people hallucinating God being verified are infinitely more than the numbers of examples of meeting God being verified. But for all I fucking know, Abel, maybe you met God. But my position right now is evaluating the likelihood of that and you have not yet given me sub, uh, uh, a sufficient reason to believe that that is what happens. I'm unmuting you now. If you believe you have sufficient reason, please now present that. So, uh, I'm sorry, what was the last question? You have not yet presented sufficient reason for me to believe that it is more likely that you met an actual God than, you had, than there is a natural explanation. And by the way, Abel, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. By the way, I already told you that. Hang on. Those natural explanations do include the possibility that you're lying. I'm not saying you're lying, mm -hmm. but when you're asking about consistency, I'm giving you the Correct. full consistency. I have lots of verified explanations for, for experiences like yours. I have zero right. verified ones that actually were God. So you're me. Talking to you, Abel, put yourself in my shoes. All I have Correct. is a value that I only want to believe things if there's a good reason to believe them. Correct. And that is never a good reason to, to believe based on what I just told you. I even said that from the beginning. That's why I never lead with it's that. It's weird, though, then that um, you believe on that. You kind of drug, you, you, you just drug it out of me. And yeah, so it's I'm all my fault, I'm sure. So what, it's, is, it's, what it's, is the good reason you have a, to believe? Kind of, the best reason is, is to use logic. You know, Sir, if you if, said you believed you know, earlier because of this God experience, and you've just admitted it's not a good reason to believe. When we asked you no, why you, you believed— not no, for no, me. For you. Excuse for me, me I'm, you I'm just, totally valid. You just affirmed everything I said about not verifying everything, not eliminating the possibilities, and you affirmed the whole concept that there are many more natural explanations that have been verified— it's infinity basically to zero, or it's a it's a it's an infinite 
uh, ratio, rather. So what do you mean it's a good reason for you to believe? I Literally, Abel, the thing upon which you are saying you believe, I had experiences you could call, hallu- basically I now call, hallucinatory, or if that's a word, b- that they were mildly hallucinogenic. That there were experiences okay. of thinking I heard voices, feeling so sure that I was having external knowledge put into me, the burning in the bosom. In fact, only the things the Bible promises you'll get, because it doesn't promise that you'll see God. But the still small voice, the burning in the bosom, for sure. Things that I thought, like where I'm just sitting in, in church and I think I'm seeing basically the reflections of angels and things like that, which are just basically lighting stuff as you stare at a blank wall for long enough because the Mormon church decorates their church their church the way I decorate my walls as a 33-year-old bachelor, plain and empty. Uh, I don't believe, despite having that quote-unquote level of evidence. So why do you believe when you why, can acknowledge I, all you. the ways that could go bad? Right. So my belief is based on predictions. So I was told when I had this conversation with the Lord, the Lord told me what was going to happen before it happened. Details, things that were confirmed. And I told you about the witnesses. I like that you used the word confirmed. Long story. I'm sorry, say it again. I just like that you used the word confirmed, but go on. Yeah, I mean, there there were confirmation for me. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, I know that this isn't going to, mean a hill of beans to you and i wouldn't expect it to um but yeah that, let's just say what i realized was just as clear and 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 valid to me as you seeing the color blue or a sky or a car or no whatever, it isn't whatever no else. it isn't it absolutely uh, is not because I can, not for me it was i can continue you, no. no 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 no, no. there you, is no. no there is no you can't say for me it's as valid as yours because you it is not and it's certainly not if as sound. I, told you, I have an existing claim that this jacket is blue, and I can mm-hmm. confirm it yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever, until we destroy the jacket. But then, even after then, because it's on video, we can repeatedly mm-hmm. test my claim. You have a mm-hmm. claim that God exists, and that confirmation happened within a group of other believers. Tale as old as mm-hmm. time for every fucking religion, yep. but fine. Within yep. a group of yep. believers, this blue thing, I can take it to a Christian. I can take it to anybody of any religion. And more importantly, I can take it to objective sources. And we're going to find out it's blue. What objective source testing can we do for yours that brings it to as valid? Well, without my presupposition that I hold, of course, I would say, I don't know what the attribution was. There's one thing to have an experience. There's another thing to actually explain what that attribution really is in reality. Bro, you do not answer my questions. Person, person. He never answered mine either. I was still like an answer to mine from a long time ago. I I apologize. Please ask it again. (laughs) I'm just all over the place. Go ahead. We'll go with Forrest. And then, yeah, I think we're going to have to literally like put put fucking like walls on this call because I just did a whole, (laughs) I just explained very, very meticulously the difference between my claim and your claim and the ability to verify external objective. The blue thing, it'd be the easiest peer review ever to get Mm -hmm. to, to, to have done. And you compared it. And I asked a question, but since apparently you also missed Forrest's question from a while ago, Forrest, why don't you go ahead and ask what yours was again? Yeah, I'll ask mine again, and maybe maybe we'll go a different path this time. My question was, you started this call by saying, by criticizing Jimmy and I, by asking, you know, how do you know that the jacket is blue or anything like that? And Jimmy said, through my observation and then independent verification of that. And you said, yeah, but how is it verified? And you said, also through observation. And you said, all it is is observation, and you don't have an objective standard, with, and all you have is his observation, and you don't know anything, because all you have is your senses telling you things, you can't know anything. And then I asked you, how do you know God's real? And you said, I saw him, and I heard him, and I did all, and I said, those are your senses. That's the same thing you just told us. We can't know anything. And now you're saying that's what you've got. And then you moved on with Jimmy talking about, yeah, but I know I didn't hallucinate because I have no idea. Perfect. So what was missed in that was that I was doing an internal critique 
on your view and you and I wanted you to admit it that's why I was saying everything that I was saying about knowledge using your senses and reasoning you guys are the mm-hmm. ones saying that you can be wrong about things that you sense and reason about oh I think we're not that's just talking about us said. we're saying it about you and I might go so far as to that's- say I suspect you are super wrong about many of these concepts it's not isolated but that's us. the thing Literally any introductory science course teaches about logical fallacies. And the first thing we learned, or at least when I was, you know, the first thing we talked about was naive realism. The belief that your senses alone can tell you the truth about the universe is a problem. That I have no idea with my senses alone about infrared light. With my senses alone, I have no idea about x-rays. With my sense, I need other things to verify the existence of those things for me. I need to build instruments. I need to do tests. I need to find other, you know, the microwave in my kitchen. I can't see microwave radiation, but I can see its effects on the food that I put in there as it gets hot. And if I had the right kind of camera, I could see microwave radiation. I could see that happen. I can do tests to prove microwave, but I can't fucking see it. So like, that's the concept of naive realism, the belief that your senses actually give you accurate information all the time and they're all you need is bogus. You need to be able to run tests on things and translate data into a way that your senses can perceive it. That's that's the whole endeavor of science. But you're ultimately using your senses and reasoning to justify your senses and reasoning. Again, so the are you. Ends up stuck in so are not, you. No way of providing justification for the validity of your senses. Correct. And neither and neither can yours. You can and neither be wrong and about so everything able, you claim to know. Abel. So and can you. so are you. That's you the thing. Be, you you keep telling us. No, I'm sorry. I know we're I'm saying special, the same thing, Jimmy. Jimmy, but I'm yeah, special. You, do you. Yeah, that's really what it boils down special. to: is special I'm pleading. I'm what I what I know. Say you know. What I want Hold to say on, Abel. I know you guys, you're just you joking. No thing. Abel, I, I swear no, to God, you, dude, just let us finish the sentence. Wait. I know okay, that you're okay. joking. I know yes. that you're joking when you say that you're special, but really, you aren't. You've been saying exactly that this whole time. You guys have no way of knowing anything, and you keep saying you got us to admit that we have, the, as if we haven't been very honest about that the entire time. Like, You keep telling us that we can't know anything, but you have some sort of objective standard. You have God on your side, and you know that. Straw man. I'm summarizing. It's a summary. (laughs) Real quick, real quick, real quick then. Okay, fine. Here's the easy way. This is a yes or no question. Abel, can you be wrong about everything you say you know? No. Yes, you can. You are a fucking no. liar at this point, Abel. No. How no, fucking that's dare it, no. you? Abel, how do neither you know? Can you. Abel, no, no, no. I agree. You said neither can you. You can right. only say so neither can thing. you if, no, this is not the thing. Wait a do second. You understand the Hang argument, on. though. I understand fucking perfectly your silly William Lane Craig level, but also used by the dinosaur idiot guy. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. level argument. I understand it probably better than you do because I've been engaging with it like crazy from Theus for years now. The actual thing I asked was, could you be wrong about everything? And you said no. And I called you a liar and you said, neither can you, which implies that you said yes, but you said no. So I'm going to ask you again. Do you know no, 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 I'm not straw manning shit. I'm, re- I'm muting you again since you think that you're in charge of this call. I'm not straw manning shit. I repeated you back to you exactly what happened. I asked whether you can be wrong about everything you say you know. You said no. And then you said the phrase, neither can you. Neither suggesting a collection Can you, suggesting that the answer was yes, that we were grouped together in saying yes, I would say I can be wrong about everything I think I know. Mm -hmm. So if yours include, if you are saying neither, then you must agree with that term. So I'm going to unmute you in a moment and ask again, since you already implied it, could you be wrong about everything you say you know. 
No, I can't, because the definition of no would entail that I know things, that I understand that. So, no, that would, that would sir, be a contradiction. Sir, so what question? Did it, did what it, question, we start hang on, the, hang on, hang on. Yeah, go for did it. Did I say, could you be wrong about everything you know? Or did I say everything you say you know? Which one did I say? Uh, you said say, say but Correct. I won't say no, 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 no. Is there a difference or is there not? Something. Is there a difference or not? Between yes, knowing and saying you know. Course, okay. Of course, Did you of course, earlier of course. in this call claim to know that God exists? Yes. I said not could you be wrong about knowing God exists. I asked could you be wrong about your statement that you know God exists? That one, no. You can't no, be wrong I, I, about your statement. You're a liar, Abel. How do you know? How can you demonstrate that you are not a brain in a vat? being programmed to believe in God with insufficient reason. How do you know that? How can you, how can you know that that is not the case? Because that's just absurd. No, it isn't. How is it more absurd than the fucking magic God of Christianity? Because that's reasonable. That has a now, logical it's, no, basis. This, yes. is, this is becoming a joke. This is becoming a so, fucking joke. Because you don't are believe Are you seriously going to... I, I just what's blowing me away here, Abel. What's fucking killing me is that you started this call with like fucking twenty solid minutes of like semantics and detailing out. We had to go in a whole thing about what the word "no" means, and like here's this different. You have the metaphysical side, and here's this issue of solipsism and all that. And now you're actually going to tell me that your logical argument is well, that's absurd. That's silly. That doesn't sound right. Hey, but you're, not gonna you're not going to test it. You're not going to going to verify it. How about simulations? What about a video game? What if you have a, a VR headset on and you forgot you had it on and no, you've been in a VR for the past 50 years? Maybe. Is, is that yeah. any more absurd? What, Abel, if, this... what if a different God exists, Abel? What if a different God exists and has tricked you into believing that it's the Christian God? What about that? Abel, I know that I lamented that no real theist had called in so far on the show. Are you doing us a favor? Was this a, a was this a real call, or are you a joke? Oh my God, you are really insulting me today. Okay, good. Look, Do you know what's really insulting? Thing. Being hung thing. up on mid sentence. I think where the disconnect is, you guys don't. I, I, I at best he was telling the truth and is a, or not telling the truth about being a theist, but is a liar, and at worst was a troll. The fact that he didn't expect what, me to what? hang up after I said, you know, it's more insulting being hung up on mid sentence is, <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, Fuck. you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating to me to hear somebody actually genuinely believe that they cannot be wrong by using the same mechanisms that they think that we have no valid, you know, fundamental understanding of reality. They use those same things in a way that means yep. that they cannot possibly be wrong. It's very, very, Which, like, I, I can't imagine that level of arrogance. By the way, he heard me use the word no, even if I had said no and not said, mm. say you know. But I was purposefully, purposefully myopic, essentially. That's not quite the right term. Uh, uh, I, was, I was rather anal, if you will, about making sure to word it precisely. But I had already previously defined my use of the word no in the call. Yep. So the word no yep. would have still been fine because I already would said have been sufficient. when I say no, I mean believe plus. Believe with the mm -hmm. highest level of, of confidence and justification is what is when I use the word no. So even if I hadn't, it would have been sufficient, but I did. Uh, this is a person who is basically using, I'm trying to remember who, which fucking idiot it was, but somebody who had a debate with, uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember who either person was, was literally like, starts the debate by saying, so-and-so, who's the atheist side, could you be wrong about everything? He goes, sure. And he goes, and now the debate is over because he can be wrong and I can't. Um, that, that reminds me, I, I compared somebody else to this and Matt called me out of it, but it reminds me of that Cy 10 uh, Bergen Cage or whatever his name was like, because I remember Matt did a debate with him and that's what he kept coming back to. How can I believe anything you say when you already admitted that you could be a brain in a vat? You can't know anything. But meanwhile, if you claim to know anything, you're borrowing from my belief that God is real and that means reality is real. Like, that's just, ugh, God. Which is why I have to do, you know, it's funny because somebody got, somebody was kind of a dick in the comments about like, uh, uh, in a recent episode about how 
basically that it wasn't productive to like force people to define all the words they're using. And it's literally like, yeah, it isn't productive in that it takes, it, it takes up valuable time, but it's also necessary because if you don't, they will fucking lie like they just did on this call. And so even yeah. if you're, well, my worldview says you can know, well, my worldview says you can know if the definition of no is we all seem to exist in the universe. So as we talk about this and what the qualities of that universe is, we all are going to presuppose that that universe exists because we have no other choice, but additional mm -hmm. presuppositions beyond that. If you have a choice, I don't actually think you can justify any presupposition, even that a thing would be a, yeah, there's no such thing as a justified presupposition that there is a choice to, to hold. Like it's you also have no choice, just, but to assume you will, you exist uh, or die. That's your, that's your choice. Yeah. Dying is the other choice. If, if Abe, if Abel is still listening, I also hope that someday you learn that repeating your argument is not straw manning your argument. Right. If you had made a better argument, there would have been a more clear difference between those two things. But all, all we did was repeat them. <laughs> How dare you use my words against me? <laughs> uh, fucking stupid. I'm not calling him the person stupid. The argument was stupid. I know people get yeah. a little bit. I, I get what you mean. But we do have mods absurd. and we have to be careful. Well, I, to fuck it, I break the rules that the mods make the people in the chat follow all the time. Uh, only a did. So I've got a few people on the line. We're going to try and get through the ones that are here pretty quickly. We do still have lines open only for theists. If a theist calls, we would, uh, we would add them to the show, but no one beyond that. Um, very, very, very quickly because it's not really the topic of the show, unless you're suggesting you believe it. Emery in, uh, California wants to talk about the possibility of alien life, um, I think Forrest and I's position is exactly the same. So I'm just going to pre present it. And if that answers everything, um, uh, then good. Mine is, and Forrest can just affirm yes or no. It's almost, mm -hmm. it seems almost a guarantee that there is life out there in the universe. The universe is, however, so very, very large that even if there is other life and other intelligent life, what we would consider intelligent life, it is, there's a high possibility we will never come across it or ever cross paths with it. Uh, and so I don't believe, uh, I have no reason to believe that aliens have ever visited earth Forrest, Do you have anything is that? Yeah, pretty that's pretty much long short of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Emory, I, I have, I have good reason to believe that they are out there. I have no reason to believe that they are here or ever have been. Yeah. Emery, anything on top of that that you want to ask or anything? Well, like yeah, my, so my question, I guess was, um, because I think I'm kind of in the same boat where it's like, it's a high possibility, but I was in a discussion with someone that was saying, since we don't have any evidence of, of aliens, like there's no way to know for sure if there is life on other planets, uh, regardless of the like level of sophistication of it or whatever, until we have proof that there is, we can't say there's any likelihood of it because we only have evidence of us. Um, and I'm like, okay, rationally, I guess that makes sense. But since the universe is so big, it seems more likely than not. But I also don't want to just like make that assertion without having like any thing to back it up. And I don't, and me nor the person I was talking to believe that aliens have visited Earth. So like that's yeah. not part so, of it, the discussion. But um, I was just kind of curious about like with like talking about probability and things like that, like what um, kind of is the more scientific answer. I don't know. Yeah, there's not a real way to put numeric probability on how many planets probably have life, but there is ways to put ranges of like, it's, you know, likely less than and more than, and it can be a big enough range. As far as whether or not there is uh, uh, life other than on our planet, that because we haven't seen evidence outside of our planet, it's, you don't need to take it, the evaluation on other than our planet. The evaluation would just be life in the universe. We already have 100% uh, evidence of life in the universe. And we have it on this planet. And so then we go and look and go on this planet, what are the conditions that are absolutely required for life? Which, which elements need to be present, uh, which things like distance from the sun, gravity, uh, the, the size of the planet effect. Well, the Goldilocks zone for a planet is affected by a lot of things. So I don't need to go into each piece, but whether or not they can be in the, whether the planet is in the Goldilocks zone on top of all of these other factors of things that need to be present for life in the form that we 
um, we have it shows up. And we know so far that there is, that our planet has those things. Oh, sorry, I changed the wrong thing. We know so far that our planet has those things. Uh, and we have yet to find any feature that is solo, solo present for life that we wouldn't find elsewhere in the universe. In other words, there's, there's nothing that is special about Earth that isn't common in places in the universe. Uh, and so that would be the basis upon which you would say, therefore, the potential for life is actually extremely common in the universe. But whether the life actually pops up... Um, yeah, you wouldn't be able to put hard probabilities to it, but the universe is so vast that even if that range is a large range of it's only likely to this point, to, from this point to this point, the universe is so large that that's still going to create a ton of instances of it. I, I was only half listening. I did have my headphone in as I stepped out of the room and like I, I heard something about like how there there may not be a... Uh, um, what was like a, 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 a way to calculate the probability of, of life in the universe or something like that. We do have the Drake equation, um, which is kind of that it's, it's to calculate the number of civilizations with which we could potentially maybe communicate or something like that, like an intelligent life in that way. Um, and it's uh, multiplying together, like the rate of star formation, the, the fraction of stars that have planets, the fraction of planets that could support life, the fraction of uh, uh, planets that did support life, the pl fraction of planets where life gains intelligence and then they, they, they develop communication and then that they can communicate in the length of time over which they're communicating. Like all these factors that we talk about whenever we talk about like why the SETI program has yet to be successful in giving us, you know, some sort of extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, uh, it, it, it's just basically that it's, it's saying like, here's you, you can calculate it just not well, because we don't actually know all those numbers. You know yeah, what I that's mean? kind of, that's oh. sort of the point I was making. Cause even when you're describing the Drake equation, part of the calculating, isn't just calculating the, uh, the answer it's calculating the yeah. fucking variables, which are currently uncalculated. Yeah. So there isn't a probability yeah. set yet because we don't have, like, for example, the number of civilizations that developed communication. We only right now have the one, but it's mm. probably the case that there are more. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear what all of the conversation was, but I just wanted to throw out there, like, we do yeah. have the possibility, just not like the ability at this moment, you know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as we find a second uh, civilization that's developed communication, that's going to dramatically adjust the variables to a more fine range. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, that was kind of what I had brought up was like, because we know so much about like, or not so much, but we know stuff about like what would be the conditions to create life. Um, we have a pretty strong idea of like how life started here on Earth that like it seems more likely than not that there is life on other planets, especially given what we do know that the universe is just so huge and there's millions of galaxies, billions of galaxies and other, like, it just doesn't seem likely that like they would say, Oh, like we can't know. Like, I just feel like we do know enough that like we could say with high probability. Um, but his argument was more like kind of in the same way that we can't know for sure about like, whether or not there is a God, we can't, we shouldn't say for sure, like, oh, there is life on other planets because like, Hang on, we don't know. That's all, sure. Yeah. That's already demonstrably untrue. How many, how many gods in the universe have we confirmed? Zero. <laughs> how many lives in the universe have we confirmed? Planets with life. One. Or one. Well, one yeah. Right. One happens to be a huge quantity more than zero. Two isn't a huge right. quantity more than one, but when it comes to probabilities, uh, if, mm. if somehow there was a scientist that wasn't alive looking for life and there was zero life, sure, that would be the same. But there, is, okay. there are zero gods in the universe. The difference between zero and one is an entire universe. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Literally, by the way. How many, what's the difference between one universe and no universes? Just the number one. And yet it's a whole fucking universe. Anyway. Big, big, big quantities. 
I was going to say, we can get real fucking pedantic and start talking about like the infinity between any whole number and all of these things. It's just, just, just to be yeah, an right. asshole. If we oh, had a different caller, we would have done it. <laughs> yeah, but think about it. One in, The difference between one infinity and zero is a, like the size of that proportionally is literally incalculable. But the size difference between yeah. one and two is like nothing. Like you can divide That's- all of those infinites by infinites. There's so two infinities. The difference between two infinities and one infinities is far larger than the incalculable, far smaller than the incalculable zero infinities and one infinity. You're, t- you're talking about the fact that some infinities are larger than other infinities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's That's just for fun. Cool shit, dude. But no, more, it is neat. more going with the original zero, one, and two differences uh, uh, and the incalculable nature of dividing by zero where you can totally divide mm-hmm. the other numbers up. Anyway, but that is true. Some infinities are larger than other infinities, like the number three, which is yes. an infinite number. And that's why God doesn't exist according to, or God does exist according to a recent uh, YouTube video I watched. Those are all words. Yeah. Well, <laughs> true or false, uh, Forrest, 2.9 mm-hmm. repeating is an infinitely mm-hmm. long number. Sure. And 2.9 repeating is also equal to three. Effectively. Yeah, that, that whole no, nine, not 0.9. Oh my God. Yes. I get, I, it's so weird that so many atheists think that that one might like, yeah, well, sure. Literally, it's totally, that it's a non-controversial thing. Nine repeating yeah. is a whole number. And it's just the right, nine right. repeating is one, 2.9 repeating is three. That's just, it is yeah. what it is. I don't like it either, but that's how it works. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm drawing the line to say like, yeah, if, if you ask yeah. me if the numbers are different on paper, sure. But like in yeah. reality and in practice and in, in like, yeah. Do you want to hear the conclusion of the video? Do you want to hear the conclusion? Yeah, what's the conclusion? So pi is an infinite number for sure, right? Uh, uh, yeah. And I guess pi, it's irrational. I don't know if the word infinite applies, but I, I yeah, it's infinitely long decimal. Yeah. Sure. And, 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 uh, the universe math is God and math is represented by God oh. because, because 3.14159 blah, 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 is infinite, but the universe is finite. So it can't contain infinites, but it contains pi. Therefore, something outside of the universe must which it's funny because you can disprove this with a literal pi, like the food because the food pi contains pi, the number pi and therefore the pi is God because the pi itself can't contain a finite Amount of anyway, Emery, I, I I've now gone on about things that you did. Uh, final thoughts there because we gotta we gotta start wrapping up. Um, no, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't having bad reasoning for my belief and like made sure that I had like some argument against it because like what he was saying kind of sounded right. <laughs> but Is, I also was wasn't he, sure how to like talk about it. Was he an atheist? Yes. Have him call. We'll disabuse him of yeah, his. Yeah, because he also doesn't believe that there's different um, there's different uh, sizes of infinity. So he could probably argue with you guys for a bit about that. <laughs> oh no, we can we can demonstrate that quite Googled easily. It? Yeah, that's that one's quick. Uh, uh, well, yeah, ha- have your friend call. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I'll <Emery>. try. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. See you later. That was a fun one. Also, somebody in the chat said that that uh, infinite uh, imaginary numbers aren't real. I just posted a link to a playlist uh, above from Welsh Labs that's really fucking cool visual and all the history of imaginary numbers and all sorts of shit. But even just video number one, um, it talks about uh, uh, how. Uh, oh, it might have been a joke. I think this. It looks like somebody says. But uh, yeah, if even if you if you're into numbers, it's a cool fucking series to watch. It's really cool. It just shows you how you, if you take a flat graph. And you try to graph I, it doesn't work. But if you were to able to pull the graph into a third dimension, it would work. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. I, I'm very curious about this one. Maxi in Memphis, what in the world is a Christian atheist? Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you, I'm yeah. uh, just taking you off speaker to make sure y'all can hear me, hear me fine. Yeah, I hear you fine. A Christian, mm-hmm. Okay. A Christian atheist, I mean, it's not a, well, uh, Usually I say a Christian non-theist, a term that I took from 
John Shelby Spong. I used to say Christian agnostic, but Christian atheist also works. Christian atheist means that I don't believe in the existence of anything supernatural. In fact, I'm tempted to say that I disbelieve in the existence of supernatural things, but uh, but at any rate, I do find validity for me, and that prepositional phrase is important, I do find validity for me in the tradition of Christianity. Okay. Which part? Which yeah. tradition of Christianity? Well, I mean, I discard large parts of it. I mean, I obviously don't believe in the I don't believe in the resurrection, I don't believe in the virgin birth, I don't believe in the exodus. Okay. Okay. Uh but say Christian thought is part of an evolution of moral thought that has been going on for quite some time. Okay. And I will freely say that large parts of that evolution a large large points in that evolution are utter immoral crap right so maxi i'm, I'm going to try and get to the core of this and make it quicker because i think i can you basically you believe that it sounds like you're saying christianity represents the world or that part of the world they had a certain moral framework and then christianity's moral framework has evolved as humanity has evolved and you sort of believe in that tradition of the evolving moral framework is that correct yeah, it works All right, for great. me. What is the thing that pushes the evolution of that moral framework? Um, the evol the it's the evolution of moral thought. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. The evolution of moral thought. Thought. Right, right. For example, All right. Right. So what's okay. happening? People are getting together. They're evaluating against what something like human well-being, equality, empathy those characteristics and they're going, Hey, our old things that said slavery is fine. Uh, that was wrong. Oh, that that was I wrong. Would, I, I'm not, I'm not going to engage you on slavery because slavery is wrong. No, no, no. I'm not saying you're, okay. <laughs> then we're agreeing. I'm literally, I think I'm, str I think I'm steel manning your point here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to say your point, uh, uh, because I've, I've interacted with people. And by the way, I'm sympathetic to your point. Before I give my sort of, uh, uh, not contrary point, but my complimentary point, you, so, okay, well, so it, hang on, hang on. Let me just I mean, restate it. Maxi, the Bible did endorse slavery. The Christian worldview definitely endorsed slavery, but the Christian worldview has since, for, in most places, evolved through the things we were talking about, right? Through people getting together, evaluating well-being, evaluating on a basis of empathy, evaluating on this idea of making a society that's best for everybody. And while it's not gotten perfect, right? Christian states still very much support, you know, prisons, which are, which is what America's currently doing slavery through. Uh, but it's not perfect, but it has evolved. Can we say that that's all correct? True? I would say that's pretty much true. Cool. So here's the point I was trying to make to you, Maxi. You believe in this tradition and you like, basically, it sounds like you, you are a, a, a fond observer of watching the tradition as reflected by humanity change and morph over time and go, hey, within the Christian framework, we were able to evolve even on slavery, which was like uh, basically a pivotal doctrine at one point. Uh, you don't have to agree on that, but slavery was never slavery was never a pivotal doctrine. It was a, that's absurd. A, that's absurd. But we won't argue no, on that one. No, that, no, no, Maxi, no, Maxi, 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 pivotal, Maxi, it was never a pivotal. Yes, it no, was. Listen, yes, it fucking was. Jesus mentions, it, Jesus mentions it. Jesus mentions it. It came out of listen. Jesus's mouth on top of how much time was given to it in the Bible. But fine. No, because the character of Jesus who appears, in, the character of Jesus who appears in the gospel is mostly mythological. Yes, so, Maxie, yeah. so is the doctrine. Holy shit. Maxie, fine. Let's get rid of slavery. But, anyway, Maxie, that's Maxie, Maxie hang, I, on, I, hang on, hang on, no. hang on, hang on. Hang the fuck on, because it's not important to the point. So we'll just drop slavery out. We'll just not worry about slavery. The Christian moral frame, framework has evolved as people have gotten together and applied empathy, applied this concept of well-being, and, and all of this stuff, and you have liked, 
and you sort of say you want to associate with that tradition of evolution from that part of the world as it comes through your part of the world and that evolution of moral framework without taking on the literal claims. Again, I'm dropping the slavery thing for you. I still think you're wrong, but it doesn't matter to the argument. All the stuff, if I take the slavery thing out, is correct, right? I would agree, pretty much agree. I would, I would agree with most of that, but what is your point? My you point is, there? Maxi, why associate with the moral framework that has evolved rather than the mechanism that evolved it when the existing tradition is actually what slowed down that evolution? Secular humanism prioritizes the, it, it is basically the thing that evolved this Christian tradition is basically the center of secular humanism. It is the thing, okay. it is the well-being principle. It is that applying empathy and stuff. And if people had just prioritized that from the get-go and not gone, okay, we want to have a conversation now. How do we do this, but also keep it biblical? We would have had a much faster transition out of it. So if you want to say traditionally, I come from a Christian traditional family. I want to celebrate Christian with, uh, Christmas with them and all that stuff. Fine, most atheists do that. But oh, why you would want to call yourself an atheist confused. Christian? I mean, I don't, I don't celebrate Christmas with, with my family. I Fine. Mean, the, Whatever. Like very little that I, I can think of only one thing I like about Christmas. I mean, most, most of sure. Christmas, most of Christmas is abhorrent. It was only a, for example, it wasn't a, it wasn't a thing that was directed at you as a thing you're okay. accepting. However, that is not what I call to talk about. I. The thing about being a Christian atheist was what I was asking, and so now I'm asking you why identify yep. with that instead of prioritizing the mechanism that is the actual thing you admire. Because what matters to me is I really don't care what people believe, mostly because what people believe is unverifiable. I can never really know what someone else believes. I can only, you can only know how they, you can only know how they behave. I only care what people do. Yes, I, I agree. I genuinely, okay. okay. I do care what so, people and, believe. And hang, on, result, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. May I speak? In a moment. Because I, I listen In a you. moment you can. I do care what people believe. I'm responding to the last thing you just said. I do care what people believe. However, as far as my day-to-day -day life and my social interactions go, as long as a person is consistent with secular humanism, which I think is the superior philosophy, um, then I don't spend a lot of time. I don't try to pull progressive Christians out as hard as I try to pull out other kinds of Christians. Now, the thing you wanted to add after that, go ahead. The reason I call it is that I think that the attitude that the attitude and the demeanor that you take with a lot of callers, particularly the callers who need to be who need to be persuaded, is counterproductive. Great, go make a better show. Thank you for thank you for wasting all of that time for no, the actual not, good conversation no, to I, tone I police. Go make no, the better show. Goodbye. Fuck off. I don't give a fuck what you. I don't think I do it better than anybody in the world. I do know it's effective. I have lots of evidence to the fact that it's effective. You have evidence of the fact that it was effective in this very show where people at the beginning of their calls talked about how helpful the show is. But I suspect that there are people capable of being better at it than me, better at it than Matt. Don't let Matt know that I said that. Better at it than Forrest. Forrest is about as good as a biology communicator as I've ever come across, but conceivably there could be a better one out there. Uh, on. uh, you're welcome. Uh, go do it. I'm going to keep doing my way because it's the way that I can do. It's the way I feel comfortable doing. It morphs. It changes. But if you can do it better, and I'm not saying this as a dismissive, fine, if you can do it better, then go do it better. I literally mean, if you can do it better, I'm begging you to do it better. I want there to be more people in the space. I don't want to have, I, look, do I enjoy that we have the, the number one Sunday call-in show on atheism and theism? Well, arguably, not even just Sunday, just the 
the number one uh, uh, watched and interacted with? Yeah, I like that. I enjoy it. Would I be delighted if somebody better at it than us beat us at it? Fuck yeah. I'd also be devastated if it was if we just got some like atheist Ben Shapiro's or something to <laughs> to do. If it was actually people worse than us, that would that would frustrate the fuck out of me. I don't care if you think it's counterproductive because I I actually can measure the amount of productivity how productive it is to some degree. Go do it better. If you do it better enough, I'll probably just hire you. I'll probably just send you a buyout offer or, uh, or, or bring you on and give you a better audience. Just go do it better. Fucking A. I don't care I, uh... about tone policing calls. The Christian atheist thing was the only thing I found interesting in that call. And he kept trying to get off of it so he could tone police me. That's what well, I was sitting over here. I literally just on, I was on Google scholar. I was looking something up that I was curious about. Yeah. I literally just sitting here like, cause I, I, after I was trying to keep track of the conversation for a minute um, and it was just like, well, I'm a Christian atheist, but like, I know like most of Christianity it doesn't make any sense. And really I just follow like some of the tenants, but not really any of the tenants, but like, and it just, just kind of kept becoming this different and di And every time you challenge him on something, it would be this whole fucking discussion over like what he actually meant. And it was, and like, just, and I guess I kind of just got this sense that like, this is going to either go absolutely nowhere for a very long time, or this guy's going to tell us what he was actually calling about pretty soon. So I'll just fucking wait. <laughs> and just like look up some I'm stuff fucking... um and sure enough like oh uh, yeah well th what i actually wanted to tell you is that you should run your show like i want you to run your show right 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 oh. i i didn't call to actually discuss this thing that i by the way super wrong about that fucking slavery wasn't a core doctrine in the whole thing the fuck is wrong with you learn your actual thing before you're going to associate with it uh, fucking jesus christ and then it came out of Jesus's mouth. Yeah, but Jesus was a mytho mythological. But what you're part the one of calling yourself a Christian. Which Christian doctrine isn't mythologically based? Because if it's was, if you're talking about the way it's evolved, that's no longer Christian doctrine. That's it's a, a attempt to try and keep up with something as sexy as secular humanism. I was prepared to start asking about like, okay, well, if you're a Christian atheist, what about when? Jesus said, give everything away and follow me and follow my, then I'm the father and the way and the, how do you connect to the thing? Like, what is the connect? What's the, turns out didn't need any of it. <laughs> Did, yeah. Didn't need to think at all. <laughs> just, just let that run. To, run I would have loved for you to ask those questions. And for me, I have a ton more questions, but that's not what he called in. He called in to tell me. But that's what I'm saying. If, if yeah. it had been a legitimate call about Christian atheism, quote, quote, that would have been a really interesting thing to dig into. Yeah. Fortunately, By the way, you know, it's, I, I might, maybe I am a failure as a host, but at least I don't lie to call screeners to get on the air to, to, to give a fucking lecture because you did not tell the screener that that's what you're calling about. You told the screener you were calling about Christian atheism. So, you know, uh, I, I, maybe I, maybe I'm terrible at this job. I don't fucking know, but I'm not a fucking liar. Bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last call. Shaz in uh, Virginia. Shaz, you're on the line with Jimmy and Forrest. Hello. Hey, guys. Uh, Hello, Forrest. Hello, Jimmy. Uh, Forrest, first off, I must say that I've learned a few things about biology, even though I did have biology in high school. Your programs are great. Uh, your other channel, okay? Uh, my Thank question you. was regarding Israel and Palestine. Um, I could give you my take on it, and then I just wanted to hear what you guys think. I know that you've done a couple of programs on that. Yeah, Shad, but... let's, let's actually save that for a political night, because one, uh, we're wrapping, the show's 13 minutes over time, and I don't have mm -hmm. a quick yeah. take on Israel-Palestine. Gotcha. Yeah, but let's oh, also yeah. save it just for a yeah, more political night. I, I know there's religious implications, but um, if you haven't seen yeah, it already, exactly I might. Exactly my point. Yeah, if you haven't seen it already, exactly my point. I get it. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, um, I, I went into more of those religious implications <laughs> on my channel, Jimmy Snow. Uh, I think it was last Sunday. It would have been um, on the Sometime Show. The monologue at the beginning, the first like 25 minutes, is just Israel Palestine, both and basically talking wow. about the fact that it is. Uh, I am very much on the free Palestine side, but I'm not going to stop talking about what dog shit Hamas is at the same time. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my take is that there are no good 
good sides or good guys on in this one. Oh, I totally I mean, disagree. Right from the brick, There's yeah, Palestine. Totally there right Pal Pal no, Palestine. No Palestine has a ton of good guys in that mm -hmm. conflict. Hamas is not Palestine. It's the idea is that it's Israel versus Palestine instead of what it should be, which is not even that it should be Israel versus Hamas because Israel, that still implies that Israel's fine as the uh, one of those sides. Uh, but again, we're not going to get into it tonight, uh, but um, uh, you. you know, free Palestine, stop killing innocent people and genocide is bad, period. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much the long short of my idea. I think we're more or less in agreement. Cool. Uh, as the question was actually, I mean, I heard last debate, uh, not debate, have a conversation with Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And then I saw his uh, take on the conversation itself. My two bits is, I mean, uh, it's a question ideally would have, should have been put to Matt, but he's not there today. Uh, so Matt, seems to have a lot of respect for this guy, but he is woo-woo on the same level as Deepak Chopra or whatever. I've, I mean, seriously, it's just fucking woo-woo. He's such a confused character. And uh, Matt seems to have some respect for this guy. I don't no, know why. And I, I, I don't know what that phrase means, that Matt has some... Matt, in sitting down in a conversation, even with a person who is a fraud or a bigot, if he's sitting down in a conversation, will converse respectfully uh what mm. respect do you think i've not only have i i matt and i met over our mutual disrespect of jordan peterson when years ago i did a game show with some people from the aca literally called word salad generator or jordan peterson quote uh and matt <laughs> matt asked if he could come on it with the aca guys we hadn't actually met before then so i don't know what that means but i i would call in that's that's definitely a conversation to have with matt yes absolutely absolutely um I'm sure you guys had a long day. I've been on hold for a long time as I well. But yeah, great show, guys. Uh, cool. Love what you guys do. I really do. I do think this makes a difference because, oh my God, I mean, what, you know what I'm scared of is if we get the right in, the trumpet, trumpeters in, in 24, this might actually lead to the Armageddon that the, the Jesus lovers and the, the other shitters are waiting for because I mean, God, I mean, Biden's been doing a good job. He's been, I think he's been holding the Israelis back. I shudder to think what the right would do with the Israelis. I mean, and it'll, it'll depend on how much BB sucks Trump's dick. That's the honest answer. The, the amount of admiration <laughs> that if Trump wins, uh, BB will have to basically start pretending that Biden was the worst, uh, even though they're like great friends, and that Trump is the BB, most brilliant BB statesman has no ever. Problem pretending. BB has no problem pretending whatever he needs to pretend. That's true. He's pretty good. To liar. stay in power and fuck around. Yeah. Okay. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. All right. We'll wrap there. Good show, guys. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, Chaz. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I feel the same way. Like, I would love to have that conversation, but like, that is a long conversation for a, a, a deserves a lot more respect than we could possibly give it at this moment. Uh, I've talked about the, the, the genocide uh, quite a bit on TikTok. If you want to hear my play, it takes there. Um, mainly, I think it's really, really, really frustrating and absurd that so many people are pretending to not understand the difference between criticizing a government and criticizing an ethnic group or religion. Or saying that people don't have a right to exist in a country, or condemn, or con, uh, condoning terrorism, or forgetting about hostages, or any of these other ridiculous straw men and red herrings are being thrown up to avoid having an adult conversation about genocide. Yeah. Uh, also, in terms of what you were saying there about like, the word salad or Jordan Peterson quote, there actually is uh, wisdomofpeterson.com. I don't that know, was, you've probably that seen was it. the thing we were using. Was somebody had made a, a, a yeah, and so. The way the game show worked was it was different rounds of like you had to guess which whether whether it was Jordan a genuine Jordan quote or a uh, mm -hmm. the generator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I just opened it up. I got the metaphorical opens existential mysteries. That sounds like some shit. He that, probably yeah, has said met that. Metaphors do open up existential mysteries. That's the whole point. That's yeah, true. of course. The dominance hierarchy differentiates into total destiny, roughly speaking. Yo, <laughs> yes, the, 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 
the total hierarchy of dominance, dominance, he would say dom, dominance, God. He, uh, wow, there's just a stupid thing he was doing with. I, I don't know if you've heard about his unaccredited, unaccredited university that he's launching. Have you heard about that? No. Yeah. Let me look that up. Uh, uh, yeah, do, do it in the, do it after the show. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, we're going to, we're going to call it a day here. Uh, I got to tell you, I, despite the fact that it took a while to get some spicier calls and though we started off with some atheist calls, I still had a good time. We had a good calls, good conversations, good company and a great live chat. But, but Forrest, do you know the real reason why this show was so great to me? Uh, why? Cause I love you, baby. See now here, I thought we were going to do a cool callback or something. Like, I do this I, every I think week. This, this show like went this. really well because we graduated from the Army Academy of Show Running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, so you'll stupid. never be a good evolutionary biologist until you go agree to join the government cult. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Oh, I, I haven't been a part of the war machine. Therefore, I don't know shit viruses. Last words for us. Tell people where to find you. Uh, hey, go to ValkyLabs.com and you can find me on the TikTok, the YouTubes, the, the Patreons, and all those other things. Uh, go check out my newest episode of Reacteria on YouTube. It would really be cool. And stay tuned because this month I've got three videos coming out. None of them are going to be good. Have an awesome rest of your day and never stop learning. Bye-bye. Oh shit, I have to hit the thing. I can't no, get you should leave me hanging there.